Wait, that'd be good. If we could just kind of where are you sitting? No. <laughs> Good It's it's been fine. You've been doing do not move her, okay? You do such important work, such beautiful work, and you can tell her ages because you're doing this. No, I appreciate you. you. And you are ageless, which is very distressing, I just wanna (laughs) say. Because I think I last saw you in Athens. I think it was. I think it was Athens. Yeah, eighteen years ago. That is so funny. I mean But that was fun, wasn't it? That was such a great
but um, no, I mean, really bad. tough book to do the whole print thing. It was less than I think for Professor
to today's hybrid hearing. Pursuant to House rules, some members will appear in person and others will appear remotely via Zoom. For members appearing remotely, I know you are all familiar with Zoom by now, but let me remind you of a few points. First, the House rules require that we see you, so please have your cameras turned on at all times. Secondly, members appearing remotely who are not recognized should remain muted to minimize background noise. Third, I will recognize members verbally, but members retain the right to seek recognition verbally. In regular order, members will be recognized in seniority order for questions. Lastly, if you want to be recognized outside of regular order, you may identify that in several ways. You may use the chat function. You may send an email to the majority staff, or you may unmute your mic to seek recognition. We will begin the hearing in just a moment when I am told that we are ready to begin the live stream. The committee will come to order. Without objection, the chair is authorized to declare recess of the committee at any time. I now recognize myself for an opening statement. Good morning and thank all of you for being here. Our hearing today is about protecting women and all workers from sexual harassment, intimidation, and bullying in the workplace. We will examine one notoriously toxic workplace, the Washington Commanders football team, and the response from the NFL. During football season, millions of Americans turn, tune in to watch their favorite teams. The NFL and its teams collect the football team, and the response from the NFL. During football season, millions of Americans turn tune in to watch their favorite teams. The NFL and its teams collect tens of billions in revenues, thanks in part to federal benefits. The NFL and its teams have one of the biggest platforms in America. So what happens in the NFL has consequences for the rest of our country. The committee launched an investigation last October after the NFL refused to release the findings of an internal investigation into the widespread sexual misconduct at the Washington Commanders. The committee requested these findings, but the NFL and the Commanders have refused to produce them, while also withholding more than 40,000 documents collected in their internal review. This lack of transparency suggests that rather than protecting women, the NFL is hoping to sweep this controversy under the rug, just as powerful men like Dan Snyder have done for decades. Today, we will hear from Roger Goodell, commissioner of the NFL. I am glad he is participating, and I hope we will finally get more transparency about what the NFL found and why Mr. Goodell has worked so hard to keep it secret. We also invited Daniel Snyder to testify today. But rather than show up and take responsibility for his actions, he chose to skip town. Apparently, Mr. Snyder is in France, where he has docked his luxury yacht near a resort town. That should tell you just how much respect he has for women in the workplace. Mr. Snyder's absence is all the more telling given that the committee released new evidence today that Mr. Snyder himself fostered the commander's toxic workplace. According to top executives, he fired women, but not men, who engaged in relationships with other employees while defending male executives accused of sexual harassment. And he kept employees from speaking out through a culture of fear. As one longtime employee described Mr. Snyder's tactics 
quote, if you don't obey, intimidate. If you still don't obey, terminate. Finally, the employee added, quote, if that didn't work, buy them off, end quote. The committee has also uncovered evidence that Mr. Snyder conducted a shadow investigation to target his accusers, pin the blame on others, and influence the NFL's own internal review. He filed phony lawsuits to collect private phone records, emails, and text messages. The committee has a copy of a dossier created by Mr. Snyder using the information he collected. And in this, this dossier is absolutely astonishing and extremely disturbing. It shows the links Mr. Stein, Mr. Snyder went to to harass, intimidate, and silence his accusers, including journalists, attorneys, and former employees, anyone involved. It starts here just naming journalists that he wants to investigate and investigated. He sent private investigators to former cheerleaders' homes and he offered hush money to buy their silence. The NFL was aware of his actions, but failed to stop him. We obtained a secret legal agreement between the NFL and the commanders that enabled Mr. Snyder to prevent the disclosure of documents and information, including to this committee. Some have argued that protecting women isn't worthy of this committee's time. I strongly disagree, and I'm not alone. In April, six attorneys general condemned the NFL for its ongoing failure to address sexual harassment and gender discrimination across the league. The NFL ha itself has launched new investigations based on evidence brought to light by the committee. For more than two decades, Dan Snyder refused to protect the women who worked for him from the toxic culture he created. The NFL has also failed to protect these women. Now I believe it is up to Congress to protect them and millions more like them. We have introduced two bills, along with committee members, to do exactly that. Our first bill, the Accountability for Workplace Misconduct Act, will require employers to conduct thorough investigations and share the outcome with victims, and it will prohibit employers from using non-disclosure agreements to conceal workplace misconduct, one of uh, Dan Snyder's favorite tactics. Our second bill, is the Professional Images Protection Act. Our investigation confirmed that the commanders secretly created lewd videos of cheerleaders for the private enjoyment of Dan Snyder. That is despicable, and our bill will create notice and consent requirements for employers who use their employees' professional images. Let me also assure my colleagues that we can protect workers while also making progress on other important issues. Just this month, our committee held a crucial hearing on gun violence and advanced legislation to protect LGBTQI rights. And next week, we will be holding a bipartisan hearing with President Biden's drug czar on the opioid crisis. But today, our focus is on protecting women in the workplace, and I believe that issue merits our full attention. In February, the committee held a roundtable where we heard directly from several courageous former team employees. Before I yield, I'd like to remind everyone what they said about the harassment they endured and the need for accountability and they asked Congress to act. We will now play a video.
I experienced many work firsts there. First bonus, first promotion, first office potluck, first employee hire, first threat of physical violence by a supervisor, first hostile work environment, first public humiliation, first sexual assault. I learned that placing me strategically by the owner at a work dinner after this networking event was not for me to discuss business, but to allow him, Dan Snyder, to place his hand on my thigh under the table. Those that sit here today and many others came forward at great personal risk. We did our part believing that what we were doing would help employees across the country, but to our shock and our disappointment, the NFL did nothing. I stand before you here today reliving these difficult memories to try to make a change for other women at the team, in the league, the industry, and the workplace. There are just some of the stories that the Washington football team and the NFL have tried so hard to hide. I want to shine a light on the toxic workplace that we endured and to plead with the NFL to release the report from the Wilkinson investigation. This is not just about the Washington football team and its employees. It's about the millions of women in workplaces across the country who endure harassment every day in our everyday lives. Today is when Democrats and Republicans can come together and ensure that what we experience will not happen anywhere else throughout this country. Today is when we can make a difference and we can show the American people how impactful Congress can be. I now yield to my good friend, the ranking member, Mr. Comer, for his opening statement. Thank you, Madam Chair. A toxic work environment is one in which staff fear meeting or even talking to leadership, where staff is humiliated or worse, demoted, where employees are retaliated against for raising questions about possible ethical breaches. Now, where did this take place? Steps away from the Oval Office at the Office of Science and Technology Policy within the Executive Office of the President. When? It started shortly after President Biden's inauguration in 2021. The very day he was inaugurated, the President said, and I quote, I'm not joking when I say this. If you ever work with me and I hear you treat another colleague with disrespect, talk down to someone, I will fire you on the spot. No ifs, ands, or buts. Joe Biden said that. It did not take long for those words to ring hollow. The White House Counsel's Office had well documented, uh, documented allegations for a year, but it refused to hold bad actors accountable. For all we know, the problems in the Office of Science and Technology Policy may still be happening. Have we had a single hearing about the hostile work environment at President Biden's top science office? No. Have Democrats even sent a single oversight letter about it? No. A core responsibility is of this committee to conduct oversight of the executive branch. But this entire Congress, Democrats have turned a blind eye to the Biden administration. Instead, the oversight, invest, the oversight committee is investigating a single private organization for workplace misconduct that took place years ago. Let me be clear. No one should be subjected to a hostile work environment and bad actors must be held accountable. The workplace misconduct that is the topic of today's hearing has already been subject to investigations, fines, settlements, and very intense media scrutiny. New leadership has been installed and improved workplace policies implemented without congressional involvement. During the Democrats' so-called investigation, this committee has held a roundtable, two transcribed interviews, two depositions, and now this hearing. Democrats, whose top economic concern is that the NFL is not collecting enough money, even urged the Federal Trade Commission to open an investigation based solely on the testimony of a former employee with an ax to grind. Democrats' playbook is to focus on the past and ignore the present and future. All these taxpayer dollars and staff hires to reinvestigate what has already been investigated. No new punishments have been levied against the commanders due to this investigation because they have already faced consequences for their hostile workplace. No new relief has been granted to any of the aggrieved parties because Congress has no authority to provide relief in any of these instances. No additional workplace improvements have been made due to this investigation because, unlike at the Office of Science and Technology Policy, 
the workplace overhaul has already begun. I would ask why Congress must tackle the NFL football team's workplace and not a White House office or our own members, but I think we know the answer. Democrats are more committed to politics than our committee's mission. Our committee's mission is government efficiency and effectiveness. Our committee's mission is to protect taxpayer dollars from government fraud, waste, and mismanagement. Our committee's mission is to hold government more accountable. Instead of conducting oversight of the federal government, Democrats investigate the private sector. While our nation struggles under the weight of growing inflation and rising gas prices, Democrats are demanding oil and gas companies decrease production. They did it right here in this committee with the oil CEOs down there. Ro Khanna was the first one to ask each energy CEO, will you pledge to cut production? And now we know where the president's headed in Saudi Arabia right now. The chairwoman even subpoenaed the oil CEOs after they produced thousands of documents. While Americans are suffering from the effects of Biden's border crisis, including fentanyl streaming across the border and killing our teens, Democrats have examined paychecks for soccer stars and held numerous hearings to demonize the oil and gas industry and push their radical Green New Deal climate agenda. While mothers are struggling to find infant formula on store shelves, Democrats held a hearing on pet flea and tick collars. It's no surprise that a nonpartisan organization gave the Democrats an F in oversight. This committee is failing the American people. I urge the chairwoman to get back to the core mission of the oversight committee and do what the American people elected us to do, conduct oversight of the federal government and the Biden administration, which is on a path to destroy America. Let's hold hearings and conduct oversight on the crises affecting Americans today. 40-year high inflation, skyrocketing gas prices, out-of-stock baby formula, raging border crisis, surging fentanyl overdoses, and our tanking stock market. The American, expect, the American people expect us to be their voice in Washington. It's past time we start doing what we were sent here to do. And with that, Madam Chair, I yield back. The gentleman yields back. I now recognize the gentleman from Illinois, Mr. Christian Morthy, for an opening statement. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to address why we're here today. We're here because sexual harassment remains a, a big problem in the workplace. Even as we tackle other challenges in our country, we must end sexual harassment. Each year, millions of fans, including myself, enjoy the NFL. NFL teams, coaches, and players influence public opinion on sensitive topics, too. For boys and young men, that means taking cues as to how they should treat women. And for girls and young women, cues as to how they should be treated. That reality is why it's so important that the NFL holds itself to a, quote, higher standard, as Commissioner Goodell has said, and why the NFL must ensure that those who fail to meet that standard are held accountable. For the Washington commanders, that reckoning, unfortunately, has not come. By its own admission, the NFL says that, quote, the workplace culture at the commanders was not only unprofessional, but toxic for far too long. Numerous women have accused team officials, including the current owner, of sexual misconduct. Several years ago, another House Oversight Committee chair opened an inquiry into sexual harassment charges, that time involving USA Gymnastics explaining that USA Gymnastics set the rules and policies that govern the sport of gymnastics and has a significant responsibility to its sport and athletes. That person was Republican Chair Trey Gowdy. We agree. And similarly, the NFL sets the rules and policies affecting pro football, and it too has a serious responsibility to uphold this sport. As one of America's most visible workplaces, the NFL also sets the tone for how employers handle sexual harassment. Our colleagues on the other side have raised a number of issues worthy of this committee's attention, from gas prices to the opioid crisis. We must continue to address those. But at the same time, we must tackle sexual harassment, not just for the sake of the commander's former employees, but also for our constituents. Today, we must send a clear message that the conduct that took place in the commander's organization is never acceptable, not in the NFL and not anywhere. Thank you. I yield back. 
The gentleman yields back. I now recognize the gentlelady from North Carolina, Representative Fox, for an opening statement. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Madam Chairman, I'd like to echo the ranking member's comments today. This administration is doing all it can to annihilate America. It's like Nero fiddling while the country burns. It's been widely reported that approximately 72% of Americans think the United States is on the wrong track. Chairwoman, with unanimous consent, I'd like to submit this NBC News poll for the record. Are we? So ordered. Thank you. Are we looking into what caused the 40-year high inflation rate? No. Are we examining how the FDA and Biden administration failed to address the baby formula shortage? No. Are we examining how and why teens are purchasing illicit drugs on social media, leading to a record number of overdoses? No. What about the crisis at the southern border? Are we doing anything to address the massive humanitarian and national security catastrophe? No. Instead, this is another day when this committee failed to do what the American people have elected us to do. Last week, we had a hearing on pet collars. Today, a hearing over a single NFL team about workplace conduct that occurred years ago. As the ranking member mentioned in his opening remarks, no one, no one should be subjected to a hostile work environment. Bad actors must be held accountable. This hearing is just another example of Democrats failing to conduct meaningful oversight of the Biden administration and the ongoing catastrophes fueled by President Biden's incompetent policies. The NFL investigated this conduct and ultimately the team punished the bad actors. The NFL is currently investigating additional claims made. As we sit here today, many American families are wondering how they'll find formula for their babies or formula-dependent children. Families are wondering how they're gonna pay for gas to get to their jobs or pay for groceries. Families are struggling to make ends meet, and the Biden administration continues to stand on the sidelines, sticking to their message that a recession is not inevitable. Families are feeling the squeeze now, and there's no end in sight. Children are suffering from extreme learning loss because Democrats bowed to the teachers' unions and kept schools closed for 18 months in some deep blue areas of this country. The issues of the Washington Commanders and the NFL are the last thing on Americans' minds. What is this committee doing to help families working to fix their wounded children and put food on the table? Nothing. We must reevaluate our priorities as members of the Oversight Committee and refocus our energies on overseeing the Biden administration and the federal government to ensure the American people are not left behind. Thank you, I yield back. The gentlelady yields back. Now we will introduce our witness. We will hear from Roger Goodell, the commissioner of the National Football League. The witness will be unmuted so we can swear him in. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. You. Let the record show that the witness answered in the affirmative. Thank you. Without objection, your written statements will be made part of the record. With that, Mr. Goodell, you are now recognized for your testimony. Thank you. Good morning, Chairwoman Maloney, Ranking Member Comer, and members of the committee. I am Roger Goodell, Commissioner of the National Football League, and I'm here today to discuss the NFL's efforts to promote safe and respectful workplaces, including at the Washington Commanders. The Commanders are one of 32 NFL clubs, each of which is managed by its ownership and executives and have their own workplaces and policies. Two years ago, the Commanders asked me to recommend independent counsel to address workplace issues and recommend changes to improve the workplace culture. We identified several candidates and the club selected Beth Wilkinson, a distinguished former federal prosecutor. Approximately six weeks later, the club asked my office to assume oversight of the Wilkinson firm's work. The Wilkinson firm conducted a comprehensive review of the workplace at the club, interviewing more than 150 witnesses. As a result, 
we gained a clear understanding of what the workplace had been at the commanders, how it had begun to change, and what further steps were needed to support our ultimate goal of transforming that workplace to one that is safe and productive for all of its employees. Let me start by expressing my gratitude to the men and women who shared their experiences during the investigation and to Beth Wilkinson and her team who did their work with the highest degree of integrity and professionalism. It required substantial courage for many to relive the painful experience and tell their individual stories. No one, no one should experience workplaces like the one they described, especially not in the National Football League. I can say to every victim unequivocally that their willingness to come forward has contributed to a substantially improved workplace. It is clear to me that the workplace in Washington was unprofessional and unacceptable in numerous respects. Bullying, widespread disrespect toward colleagues, use of demeaning language, public embarrassment and harassment. Moreover, for a prolonged period of time, the commanders had a woefully deficient HR function, particularly with respect to reporting practices and record keeping. As a result, we imposed unprecedented discipline on the club, monetary penalties of well over $10 million, and requirements that the club implement a series of recommendations and allow an outside firm to conduct regular reviews of their workplace. In addition, for the past year, Daniel Snyder has not attended league or committee meetings, and to the best of my knowledge, has not been involved in day-to-day -day operations at the commanders. The cheerleader program has been entirely revamped and is now a co-ed dance team under new leadership. And the most recent independent workplace report which we have shared with the committee, confirms that an entirely new, highly skilled and diverse management team is in place and that there has been, quote, substantial transformation of the team's culture, leadership and human resources practices, end quote. To be clear, the workplace at the commanders today bears no resemblance to the workplace that has been described to this committee. We did not receive a written report of Ms. Wilkinson's findings for compelling reasons that continue to this day. A critical element of any workplace review is broad participation by both current and former employees. Encouraging employees to come forward and share their experiences, which were frequently painful and emotional, was essential to identifying both the organization's failures and how to fix them. To encourage this participation, Ms. Wilkinson promised confidentiality to any current or former employee. For this reason, shortly after we assumed oversight of Ms. Wilkinson's work, we determined that a comprehensive oral briefing was best to allow us to receive the information necessary, both to evaluate the workplace as it was, and to ensure that the team put in place the policies and processes to reform that workplace, all while preserving the confidentiality confidentiality of those who participated in the investigation. Oral reports are often used by the NFL and other organizations in conducting internal investigations and for other issues. If appropriate, we will make public a summary of the key findings as we did here. We have been open and direct about the fact that the workplace culture at the commanders was not only unprofessional, but toxic for far too long. I'm aware that some victims, including those who appeared before this committee, each of whom was invited to participate in Beth Wilkinson's investigation, have chosen to share their experiences publicly, and I fully respect that choice. Many others made a different choice, and it is my responsibility to honor the commitment to protect their confidentiality. I'm confident that should there be another investigation at the NFL or our clubs where similar discretion is desired, future witnesses will feel comfortable sharing their experiencing experiences, knowing that we do not go back on our word. When the committee has asked questions or requested documents which could violate witness privacy, we have asserted privilege. We will continue to do so to safeguard our commitment. Earlier this year, the committee heard testimony from several former employees that included new and direct allegations against Mr. Snyder. We promptly engaged former U.S. Attorney Mary Jo White to investigate those allegations. Because those new allegations were brought to the committee in a public setting, 
We will share the results of that investigation when it is completed and will take additional disciplinary action if warranted. Since the committee opened its inquiry last October, we have fully cooperated, producing more than 460,000 pages of documents, responding to many written questions, engaging in numerous discussions with committee staff, and I'm appearing voluntarily today. We have not allowed the commanders or its ownership or council to direct or make decisions regarding the work that was done by the Wilkinson firm. The work currently underway by Mary Jo White or this committee's inquiry. Finally, I want to address the committee's review of non-disclosure agreements. Our policies do not allow a club to use an NDA to bar someone from participating in a league investigation. And nobody who wished to speak to the Wilkinson firm was prevented from doing so by an NDA. We also believe that people who come forward and want to maintain their privacy should be allowed to do so. The assurance that it was safe to participate and that people could rely on the promise to protect their privacy allowed us to do a thorough review and make the necessary changes in the workplace. I have been and remain committed to ensuring that all employees of the NFL and the 32 clubs work in a professional and supportive environment that is free from discrimination, harassment, or other forms of illegal or unprofessional conduct. Thank you for inviting me today, and I will do my best to answer your questions. Thank you for your testimony and for coming today. I now recognize myself for five minutes. Madam Chair, I have a parliamentary inquiry. The, the gentleman is recognized. Madam Chair, the U.S. Supreme Court case, U.S. versus Watkins, makes clear that Congress's investigative power must be related to and in the furtherance of a legitimate task of Congress. Especially in light of the, the testimony by Mr. Goodell, how does continuing this hearing actually relate to a legitimate task of Congress in the face of record high inflation, record high gas prices, a completely unsecured border, a fentanyl crisis that is killing more people between the ages of 18 and 45 than any other cause in the United States, a baby formula crisis, a tampon crisis? Madam Chair, the commissioner has just detailed in his own testimony that the, that the Washington commanders, Redskins, whatever you choose to call them, have been held accountable. They've made necessary reforms to the organization. You got a chair here for Mr. Snyder who told the committee he was the not going to be here. The gentleman will suspend. Madam Chair, the what is the purpose of this, will this, suspend. What is the purpose of this the hearing? The gentleman will it suspend. Won't. This, has, this is not about a stated parliamentary inquiry. That is the parliamentary inquiry, have, Madam Chair. What is the purpose of it? You can bang the gavel all you want, but I don't really care. What is the purpose of continuing this, Madam Chair? That is the parliamentary inquiry, and how does, does Congress's business actually be continued? How does, it, how does Congress's business actually be continued by continuing this hearing? The gentleman co-sponsor. Co okay. All right, I now recognize myself for five minutes for questions. The NFL's decision not to release the findings of an investigation into the toxic workplace culture at the Washington Commanders denied victims and the American people of a full accounting of what transpired at the team for the past 20 years. Today, the committee released new evidence documenting the toxic workplace at the commanders, details that the NFL had not previously made public. We found that Dan Snyder refused to discipline coaching staff accused of sexual harassment. Instead, according to one executive, he tried to, quote, make the problem go away, end quote. We found that Mr. Snyder approved the firing of a cheerleader for having a relationship with a male team member, but took no action against the male employee. And we found that Mr. Snyder orchestrated a shadow investigation, sending private investigators to the homes of former employees, terrifying them, offering hush money, and compiling a dossier on his accusers. Commissioner Goodell, do you think this is acceptable behavior for the owner of an NFL team? 
Mr. Goodell. Chairwoman uh, Maloney, uh, that is exactly why we took this issue so seriously. Uh, it's exactly why we engaged an independent investigation uh, with Beth Wilkinson and her firm. Uh, she had uh, full access to be able to uh, engage with anyone who Reclaiming chose to my forward. time, I have very limited time, and thank you for appearing okay. and for your testimony. We don't know how much more information is still out there because the NFL has refused to make the findings of the Wilkinson investigation public. Commissioner Goodell, yes or no, will you commit today to providing this committee the full findings of the NFL's internal investigation while protecting the, the identities of the confidential witnesses? Mr. Goodell. We uh, gave a summary report, Madam <laughs> Chairwoman. Uh, the, chair, the report uh, was broad in its nature, but specific to the fact that the, uh, the culture at the Washington football team for too long was toxic and incorrect. We made a commitment to protect their identities. We are going to continue okay. to do that and make sure that we protect Commissioner that for not only this investigation, but also... Respectfully, Mr. Commissioner, reclaiming my time, uh, because we have limited time, you have claimed you are withholding this information because you are protecting the privacy of witnesses. But many victims, even in this room, and witnesses have publicly stated that they want, they want this information to be released. And the NFL has made other investigations public, and I thank you for that, including the 2014 investigation into the workplace misconduct at the Miami Dolphins. Respectfully, Mr. Commissioner, for full accountability, we must have transparency. Mr. Snyder, of course, has refused to testify today. Uh, we thank you for making the Dolphins a report public. We'd like to have the Wilkinson's report made public. And I'm asking you what specific steps will the NFL take to hold Mr. Snyder accountable for refusing to testify before Congress? Madam Chairwoman, I do not have any responsibility for whether he appears before Congress. Uh, that is not well, my choice. That okay, is his choice. let me stop you right here. Mr. Snyder has not been held accountable. His refusal to testify sends a clear message that he is more concerned about protecting himself than coming clean with the American people. If the NFL is unwilling or unable to hold Mr. Snyder accountable, then I am prepared to do so. That is why I am announcing now my intent to issue a subpoena for the testimony of Mr. Snyder for a deposition next week. The committee will not be deterred in its investigation to uncover the truth of workplace misconduct at the Washington Commanders. Finally, I'd like to talk about how we're going to fix this problem, not just expose it, but fix it. Last week, along with many of my colleagues, we introduced two bills to ensure that employers like Dan Snyder cannot abuse non-disclosure agreements to silence employees and cannot film their employees and use it, use the films uh, without their consent. Uh, Commissioner, do you support the intent of these legislative reforms? Yes, Madam Chairwoman, we've had an opportunity to be able to see your outline of this legislation and both these legislation and, and concept. We certainly support it and be happy to work with your staff. While I have the microphone, I'd also like to say uh, respectfully that uh, Dan Snyder has been held accountable. Uh, as I mentioned in the opening, he faced uh, unprecedented discipline, including financial fines, uh, being removed and away from the team uh, at his uh, request for a period of time, up to the year now already. And secondly, and more importantly, a transformation of that organization that has gone on in the last year, which is, um, really important to the employees that are there now. And I hope uh, because of the, the uh, individuals that came forward in the context of this investigation, uh, they helped us make those changes. And we accepted every one 
of the workplace recommendations by Beth Wilkinson. And we think that it's had a dramatic impact as you've seen from the uh, independent and audit that was done uh, just before your hearing back in February that indicated a, a substantial transformation of the organization, which was our ultimate objective. Thank you very much for your testimony. I want to thank you for Madam, your support of the legislation, Madam Chair. which we intend to pass and protect employees, not only at the commanders, but across this nation. I yield back Madam Chairman. and now recognize Ms. Madam Fox Chairman. for five minutes. Mr. Chairman, a parliamentary inquiry, following up on what Mr. Donalds raised, what, by what authority is this committee investigating a private business, a private entity, uh, to hold this hearing? What, what authority do we have? Can you cite me that? We have authority to investigate anything and everything, and we have put him forward legislation. Ms. Anything, Fox, you are now recognized. Anything and everything. That, we'll, we'll remember that, Madam Chair, in January. That's a total embarrassment. Mm -hmm. Ms. Fox, you are now recognized for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Would you allow? Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Goodall, I, I, Mr. Goodall, I am disappointed that this committee is here today, squandering yet another opportunity no. to address the many yeah. issues facing our country. We have a chance to do something for the American people, but just like the Biden administration, this committee is sitting on its hands. Today's hearing is merely a distraction from skyrocketing inflation, unaffordable groceries, record gas and energy prices, supply chain issues, and our open southern border. As we have heard in your testimony, the NFL has submitted more than 460,000 pages of documents, responded to many requests, and engaged in numerous discussions with committee staff. It seems to me an awful lot of committee, or rather taxpayer resources, were expended to investigate the commanders in the NFL, which are both private organizations that do not employ government officials and are not in the purview of this committee. Do you believe that this committee's investigation is good use of taxpayer funds? Is that a question for me? Yes, sir. Congresswoman, uh, I, that is not a determination that I should be making. Uh, I, I listen, I understand the importance of um, your responsibilities. Uh, I can't be the one who would tell you what you need to be focused on, but um, we believe and we understand our responsibility in the, uh, in the NFL in today's society. We understand that. We do hold ourselves accountable. We hold ourselves to a high standard. We believe that we've addressed this issue responsibly, uh, fairly, by protecting not only the people who came forward to help us address this, but also making sure that we saw that transformation in the Washington Commanders organization, which uh, is really uh, a significant transformation. Well, to follow up on what my colleagues are saying, this committee has no jurisdiction over private entities. Our jurisdiction is on government entities. So I want to reiterate, I think, what you said. You have no doubts about the independence of the Wilkinson investigation or its findings, correct? I do not. Do you believe that a, somehow a congressional investigation would reach a different or, quote, better conclusion than the independent investigations conducted on behalf of the NFL? I have tremendous regard uh, for Beth Wilkinson and her team. Uh, they were thorough. They were comprehensive. Um, we made sure that NDAs did not block access to any of the people. It was their choice of which to participate, but we had over 150 people who came forward uh, we believe we understand what the environment was at the Washington Commanders for far too long, and it was unacceptable, unprofessional, and we dealt with that. And I think we've now seen a, a dramatic turnaround in a very short period of time, and I think that'll be important for all of us. Well, I think the allegations against the commanders were disturbing and appreciate you've taken them seriously in your role as commissioner. You've also worked hard to promote inclusivity, specifically around women in the game of football, from fans to coaches to referees to executives. Can you tell me more about why that's important and what the NFL is doing in this space, and particularly talk about the importance of having women in day-to-day -day leadership roles such as Tanya Snyder's? 
Well, Congresswoman, uh, we think it's diversity is an important element to uh, our success. It's, it's fundamental to what we do. We believe that having the best people, uh, diverse people, including women and people of color, the people that can contribute to the NFL to make us better, that's, that's a foundational issue for us. And so we have many programs to try to, to create that. It's an ongoing effort. It will always be. We will never reach the goal line, as we say in football, but we do believe uh, that we have made significant progress, but we're committed to making more progress. And uh, I think the work that's being done here has made the NFL better. But I also think hopefully it's been a shining light for others to see that uh, we have taken on our issues and made uh, a really significant improvement that people can see. I thank you for being here today and for uh, testifying voluntarily. I yield back, Madam Chair. The, the, the gentle lady uh, yields back, and, and before I recognize the gentlewoman from the District of Columbia, Ms. Norton, uh, I would like to clarify what I said before. Uh, this committee has the authority to investigate conduct within Congress's legislative jurisdiction, and that includes protecting women in the workplace. And uh, this committee and my colleagues and I have in already introduced two bills to address the problems that we saw in our investigation, and I'll be glad to share them with anyone on the committee. So, are, uh, and Madam I, Chair, just a question. I would. Do uh, you have a point of order? No, I'm, I'm just. I just clarification. Uh, no. Okay. Clarification. So, when you said you can, you had the authority to investigate anything and everything. You didn't really mean that. Well, I just clarified, I just clarified what I said. No, I'm asking a simple time, question. You didn't mean it when you said anything time, and everything. Reclaiming my time. Some of my colleagues across the aisle have suggested that our investigation into workplace misconduct at the NFL is a waste of time. I strongly disagree. The issue of sexual harassment is one of the most prominent and one of the most prominent and respected workplaces in this country, and a cover-up on behalf of a powerful owner should matter to all of us. It is even more surprising, given that this committee has investigated sexual harassment and assault in sports, including when Republicans were in the majority. In 2018, under the leadership of then Republican Chairman Trey Gowdy, the committee launched a bipartisan investigation into USA Gymnastics handling of allegations against Larry Nassar. In a letter to the president of the USA Gymnastics, signed by Chairman Gowdy, then ranking member Mrs. Fox, uh, member Cummings, also Mrs. Fox and myself, the committee wrote, and I quote, sexual assault should not be tolerated, but when it does occur, it is imperative that swift and immediate action be taken to stop the abuse, prevent it from occurring, and address its effects, end quote. I would like to enter the letter into the record without objection, so ordered, and we are here today to hold another sports governing body accountable because the NFL has failed the thousands of employees that work for teams across the country, and that failure has endangered women across the NFL and sent a powerful message to every workplace that accountability is optional. My time has expired. The gentlelady is, a, is recognized, Mrs. Norton. And I place the letter in the record. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Goodell, uh, in 2014, uh, the NFL uh, revised its personnel conduct policy. So I wanna discuss a passage of that uh, it said ownership and club or league management have traditionally been held to a higher standard and will be subject to more significant discipline when violations of the personal conduct policy occur. Mr. Goodell, can you briefly explain why the league holds owners to a higher standard uh, of conduct? because they're ultimately accountable for what happens in their organization. Um, they set the standard um, and all of us in the NFL hold ourselves accountable to that. Well, well said, sir. Um, I, complete, I, I completely agree with 
that. that but Dan Snyder uh, appears, uh, w- with respect to Dan Snyder, it appears that did not happen before taking over the investigation. You admitted the NFAL was monitoring the internal investigation, but as the committee investigation, our committee's investigation confirmed in July, 2020, allegations of potential misconduct by Mr. Snyder were known by the investigators in the matter you were monitoring. Mr. Uh, Goodell, did the NFL know about the 2009 allegations of sexual misconduct against Mr. Snyder before it took over the investigation? Yes or no? We did know about the 2009 allegations uh, by July of 2001, 2000, excuse me. And we made sure that our independent investigator um, was aware of those allegations and she didn't, was not blocked by NDAs. Uh, she had the ability to speak to anybody who was willing to come forward. Uh, it, it was their choice. She did speak to Mr. Snyder twice. Uh, so uh, we were aware of that issue in that summer. So the NFL was monitoring the, uh, uh, the so-called independent investigation, yet it allowed Mr. Snyder to oversee the investigation of the team and his own conduct for at least six weeks before stepping in. And isn't that correct? I'm sorry, Congresswoman, I'm not sure I followed your question there. That the NFL was monitoring the supposed independent investigation. Yet, though you were doing that, the NFL allowed Mr. Snyder to oversee the investigation of the team and his own conduct for at least six weeks before stepping in. Isn't that correct? Congresswoman, I I think I would try to clarify that, and I said it in my opening statement, is that we were asked to give recommendations for council to be able to look into the workplace issues. Um, We gave them uh, several candidates. They select Beth Wilkinson, which is an excellent choice. They began that uh, investigation and within several weeks, uh, it was no more than six weeks in my recollection, uh, they asked to have that uh, investigation turned over to the league. We accepted to do that, but we said there will be no further investigations by the Washington football team at that point. We would take over this investigation. And we did with an independent and she went ahead and she made her decisions on how to conduct this investigation independently. Um, and that's what we expected from her. And she did an outstanding job on that. I'm glad you, you did that uh, after that six week period. Uh, Mr. Goodell, will you commit today uh, that if any future allegations against a team owner alleging a misconduct arise that the NFL will conduct an independent investigation, uh, not the team under inquiry, yes or no? As part of the personal conduct policy, um, if there was an allegation that triggered that, the league would take over that investigation. Thank you for that, for making that uh, uh, point clear. I yield back, Madam Chair. Ma- Madam, back. Madam Chair, before you go to the next questioner, uh, I'd like to formally request that uh, former NFL player Burgess Owens be waived on the committee today. Without objection, and welcome. Okay, the gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Jordan, is now recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. Commissioner, uh, you believe in the First Amendment, don't you? I do. I mean, all parts of it, all, all, you know, all rights we have, your right to practice your faith, your, your right to petition the government, right to assemble, freedom of press, freedom of speech. You, you, you believe in all that? Yes, Congressman. Why do you ban Dave Portnoy from NFL games? Uh, pardon me, I couldn't hear your question. Why do you ban Dave Portnoy from NFL games? He's a journalist. In fact, he's a sports journalist. Why is he banned? Uh, Congressman, I'm not familiar with that uh, issue. I'm happy to really? check with my staff, but I'm not aware of that. Yes. 
Well, I think, I think we're That's all correct. aware of that. We're all aware of that. I mean, he interviewed, interviewed the President of the United States, interviewed President Trump in the White House. It seems to me if you can get into the White House, you should be able to get into a football game, particularly as a member of the press and, and a member of the sports press. You don't know anything about that? I don't, sir. Do you agree with the Washington Redskins' decision to fine Jack Del Rio $100,000? That was the decision that was made by Coach Rivera. Uh, again, as I stated earlier, uh, they are responsible for monitoring and, and uh, managing their own workplace. He made that decision on his own. I did not speak to him. Uh, I have great respect for Coach Rivera. Uh, he made this decision for reasons I'm sure that he thought were uh, well, but, but important. I, 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 appreciate all, I, I appreciate all that, Commissioner, but that's not what I asked you. I said, do you agree with the Washington Redskins' decision to find Jack Del Rio $100,000. I don't think it's my position to be able to say whether uh, it was the correct decision or not. Well, Mr. Del, uh, uh, Coach Rivera, in his statement when he fined his assistant coach $100,000, he said, Del Rio, quote, does have the right to voice his opinion as a citizen of the United States and it is most certainly his constitutional right to do so. I don't know if that's actually accurate anymore because if you do voice that, you end up getting fined and have to write a check for $100,000. Does that concern you? I, again, have great respect for Coach Rivera. I presume that he had uh, reasons for doing what he did, and uh, I'm sure he took a lot of factors into consideration there. Uh, last year at the uh, start of the season, I'm looking at the New York Times article, uh, a piece from September 5th, 2021, last year, start of the NFL season, you made this statement. You said, we, the National Football League, encourage all to speak out and peacefully protest. Did you really mean that when you uh, when you said that, Mr. Uh, Mr. Goodell? Yes, I think people are always responsible for what they say and what they do. But yes. And when you said you encourage all to speak out, you meant all, not just some. That's correct, Congressman. But you're responsible for what you say. There are consequences for what you do and say in life. Yeah. So it seems to me, I mean, this is, this is the concern I have. It seems to me the NFL encourages all to speak out unless you're Dave Portnoy and not allowed to a game, unless you're Jack Del Rio, uh, you, you get fined. Um, that is, I think, the concern not only I have, but a lot of your fans across the, this country have this, this, this standard. Um, does that concern you at all? Uh, it always concerns me what our fans think and how they react, but uh, we try to make sure that we're responsible in all our comments. Yeah, l let me just read the tweet from Mr. Del Rio. It said, would love to understand the whole story about why the summer of riots, looting, burning, and the destruction of personal property is never discussed, but January 6th is. What part of that statement, what part of that tweet warranted a $100,000 fine? Again, Congressman, I didn't issue the fine. Uh, I wasn't part of the decision-making process. Um, Coach Rivera obviously had reasons which he believed were substantial to do that. And I have great respect for him. Yeah, but I mean, you, a member this whole time. hearing is about the NFL stepping in when something, something happened at the Washington uh, football team's organization. And now we had something that happened in the Washington football team's organization. And you say you had no part of that. You're not going to comment on it. It's not, uh, not, not something that, that should concern you. But it seems like it should when assistant coach issues a tweet that I think a lot of people a lot of people would say, you know what, we, we condemned, we Republicans condemned the violence that took place in the summer of 2020, and we condemned the violence that took place on January 6th. We've been consistent. I think that was the point the coach was making. He gets fined, and you have nothing to say about it. I am not going to interfere with the workplace decisions that a club makes on a matter like that. That is not a, that is not a something that rises to the occasion, it, such as the subject that we're talking about today, when you have a workplace that uh, is obviously toxic and unacceptable and unprofessional. And no, that is a much no one, no one, support, me. no one supports it's, that, but we do support the First Amendment. And I understand this is a private organization, but the chilling impact when when speech is curtailed like this and you get fined for for a tweet that you put out, I think that is a concern to all of us. That's why I raise it in the committee uh, hearing today, Mr. Uh, Madam Madam Chair. I yield back. The gentleman's time has expired. He yields back. The gentleman from Virginia, Mr. Conley, is recognized for five minutes. Mr. I Conley. thank the chair and thank him for accommodating me today. Um, I will just begin by saying there's a lot of chutzpah coming from the other side of the aisle, 
uh, the, when the Republicans were in the majority under my predecessor, Tom Davis, when he was chairman, had no problem having hearings on steroids and baseball. Also a sports issue, also a private entity, uh, but there were no questions about jurisdiction then. And when it comes to being lectured about the lack of oversight, I remember four long years in the Trump administration, not a single Republican voted for a single subpoena during those four years. And we had no oversight hearings on our committee over the Trump administration and its misdeeds. And God knows that was fertile territory. So I'm not gonna be lectured uh, by, the, by those folks telling us uh, about the, our dereliction of duty and oversight. Mr. Goodell, um, do you believe the NFL has held Mr. Snyder and others accountable for 20 years of misconduct at what is now called the Commanders? Yes, I do. You believe you've held them to account? Yes. Sufficiently? Yes. Most importantly, Congressman, I think we were able to, in addition to the accountability, be able to effectuate change in the organization that, as I mentioned before, is a substantial transform transformation. Uh, we so this, have this substantial, have, sort of, let's talk about that substantial tra transformation. Instead of releasing the Wilkinson report, you issued a four-page press release. And inter alia, you said in that four-page press release, ownership and senior management actually paid little or no attention to these issues documented in the Wilkinson report. Is that correct? I don't have the release in front of me, but. Well, <laughs> all right. But the committee's investigation has shown that's actually not true. Mr. Snyder paid lots of attention. Uh, and ordering executives to fire cheerleaders who fraternize with players. He told other executives to keep cheerleaders, quote, skinny with big, and here he used a pejorative word to describe a part of the female anatomy, or, or he said he'd kill them. He intervened in HR decision after HR decision personally, deciding never to punish the favorite coach who groped lower level employees, but punish the women in those cases, not the men, in a very consistent pattern. We've also now learned that there are at least two sexual assault allegations about him personally. Did you, were you aware of that when you issued the statement that uh, uh, you, you know, he paid little or no attention to these issues? Is that news to you? As Congressman, as I stated, I think earlier, um, the uh, latest allegation was from your round table this February. So I was not aware of that until that time. So does that change your mind? Now that well, you're aware of it, we, that's, that's why we appointed Mary Jo White to look into it to determine whether the allegation and what the facts are behind the allegation will we release that report when it's completed because well, well, she brought that up in a public setting. You, so, you will, be, you're, so you're committing now to release that report? Yes, I am, because she brought it up in a public setting, Congressman. I stated that in my opening. Uh, so is that the distinction you're making between the Wilkinson report and the White report? One was brought up in a public setting and the other was not. Yes, I don't get it because because virtually all the of the beginning of the it was I said in my opening I also made the distinction. It's a very important distinction. Is that to get people to participate, Congressman? We promised them confidentiality and privacy, and an important thing for us is to be able to stand behind that, not just for this case. With but the Commissioner, Commissioner so for any future I cases, I've got people one minute. need to have respect. I, I understand that, that. But, but you're 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 acting as if the victims have not subsequently, in fact, called for the public release of the report. Virtually every victim we've met with, in our roundtable, uh, in private meetings we've had, I've got a lot of constituents who are victims of this culture. All of them have called for the release of the report. They've even created T-shirts saying release the report. So your concern about privacy, while commendable, seems to have been overtaken by the need to, for the public to understand what happened and to determine on its own, based on that report, whether that culture, unlike what you assert, is continuing. But Congressman, I would disagree with you respectfully on many occasions. There are obviously people who have come out. I mentioned again that in my opening statement, you have had witnesses that came forward and I respect them for that choice. But there are also others that made a choice not to come forward, not to disclose their identities and to request that their identities be kept private. We think that's I, I, fundamental in the concept of trying to make sure to the committee's 
point here. None of us want sexual harassment or bad workplaces. We think it's I fundamental understand. to have a workplace that people can come to forward and tell of incidents and they can be followed up. We also have a bad Commissioner, I, Madam Chair, your time has expired. The gentleman's time has expired. Thank you for your questions. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Donalds. Is Madam Chair, Madam Chair, can I just make a point? Last time I checked, you're the chair of the committee. It's up to you to decide when my time is up, not Mr. Comer. Thank you. Your time is up. The gentleman from Florida, Mr. Donalds, is recognized for five minutes. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, look, I, I think it's important in, in this hearing to clarify a couple of things. Was the workplace environment at the Washington Redskins slash commanders abhorrent? The commissioner has testified yes. In the previous roundtable, everybody agreed to that. Um, have the, has, the, has the organization been held accountable through financial fines, um, the distancing of Mr. Snyder from the team for an extended period of time, and with transformation of team culture? The answer to all those is yes, as testified by the commissioner of the National Football League. Um, it has been brought up in this hearing that yes, um, four years ago when Mr. Gowdy was chair of this committee, that we did investigate sexual harassment associated with USA Gymnastics. But it's important to understand the context of those hearings. The disgusting actions of Dr. Nasser were actually coming to light at the, at the same time as Congress was have, holding those hearings, at the same time as we were going, as, as that was moving through the, the criminal procedures. So let's understand what we're talking about here. The workplace environments of the Washington Redskins at that period of time was abhorrent. Everybody in, in this hearing agrees with that. But have they been held accountable? According to the commissioner, yes, they have been held accountable. Which goes back to the point that, committee, that Republicans on this committee are actually saying, if you want to bring legislation about this, that's fine, that's one thing. But if you want to sit a chair in the middle of this hearing room with Mr. Snyder's name on it, knowing full well that Mr. Snyder told the committee he was not going to be able to attend, well, that takes on the elements of a show hearing. And if Congress is going to go, down, go through the pathway of conducting show hearings where members of Congress want to take their pound of flesh from, from American citizens, regardless of their stature, what you're going to get is American citizens, American citizens actually having less respect for the committees of Congress. We have so many issues facing us in the United States right now. Gas prices are through the roof. I've, I've, I was just at the border for the fourth time last week. I've had four trips to the border. The president of the United States has never been. Meanwhile, fentanyl is coming into every community in the United States. It is killing people in our country between the ages of 18 and 45. It is the number one cause of death. This committee has said nothing about fentanyl to this point. Not one word. We've not done it here. So I think if you're going to examine why Republican members are frustrated with this hearing, it is not about the conduct of the Washington Redskins. It's not about that conduct, because we found that conduct to be distasteful. But you have to also look at the facts that the National Football League, which is the entity responsible for the Washington Redskins, they've gone through that investigation. They've actually held the team accountable. So what are we doing now? Are we actually going to ignore the real life economic issues that are harming every American in the United States, whether you happen to be male or female, whether you happen to be rich or poor, whether you happen to be black or white, or are we going to continue to do these show hearings? Yes, while America struggles in the reality of Joe Biden's disastrous economic policies today in the United States. That is the ire, that is the the, the, how, why, that is why members of Congress on the Republican side of the aisle are so confounded as to why we've hauled in the commissioner from the NFL. Look, I'm going to be fully transparent with y'all. I ain't really got no love for the NFL, okay? You know, like, I don't really have much love for the NFL. I love football. I've had my issues with certain rulings that have come from the NFL. There's things that, Commissioner De Goodell, I don't agree with your decisions on certain things that you've done in your tenure, but I'm not going to use my time as a member of Congress to grill you on that. That is your business as running the NFL. If the owners have a problem with you, let the owners deal with it. Me, personally, I'm a Cowboys fan. So, you know, if the product on the field of the, of the Washington Commanders is not good, that's great for me. 
personally. But I'm not going to use my time as a member of Congress to grill that organization when they've already been held accountable by the governing body who was responsible for them, which is the NFL, which the commissioner of the NFL has already testified to today. So, Madam Chair, if you want to understand why members on this side of the aisle are frustrated, it's not about holding a sexual harassment in the workplace accountable. It is not that. It is about us conducting show trials which distract us from the business Congress should be looking at. And with that, I yield back. The gentleman yields back, and I'd like to remind him that during the hearing with the cheerleaders earlier, uh, you called for the release of the Wilkinson report, and I agree with you completely. We're still working to get that report released. It's a bipartisan effort with your call for it. The gentleman from Illinois, Mr. Krishnamoorthy, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioner, for being here today. Sir, I'd like to turn your attention to this chart I have here to my right. This chart shows us the length and detail of reports uh, released after recent NFL investigations. On the far right is Deflategate, which examined the air pressure and footballs used by Tom Brady. And following that inquiry, you released a 243-page detailed report. Uh, Next to it is the Miami Dolphins sexual harassment inquiry, and after that you released a 148-page detailed report. And next to that bar is the Ray Rice domestic violence situation where you released a 96-page detailed report following that inquiry. Now, with regard to the commanders, unfortunately, we received a five-page press release, sir. Now, sir, you had mentioned uh, that the reason for the press release as opposed to a detailed uh, finding, as you had in the other cases, was because of privacy concerns. Isn't that right? That was one of the issues, yes. However, I have this 148-page Miami Dolphins harassment report that you did where you have redacted the names of various individuals out of privacy concerns. And so it is possible to release a detailed report and at the same time protect people's privacy yet you chose not to do so in this particular case with the commanders. Sir, I'd like to turn your attention to 2009. Uh, you're aware that in 2009, Daniel, Dan Snyder was accused of sexually assaulting an employee on a private airplane, correct? Am I aware of that? Yes, I'm and, aware of that and allegation. Sir, and sir, Mr. Snyder settled those claims for $1.6 million, but he did not inform you in 2009 that he'd been accused of sexual assault, correct? I don't recall him uh, informing of that, no. And failing to report such an incident under the league's personal conduct policy would be a violation of that policy, right? It's an element of the policy that they're supposed to report incidents uh, that would violate the policy, yes. And moreover, the policy requires that the NFL handle all inquiries into sexual allegations, sexual assault allegations, not the team. However, in this particular case, the commanders themselves handle the inquiry. So that's yet another violation of the personal conduct policy. Isn't that right? Well, Mr. Chairman, this is something that our uh, personal conduct policy has gone through changes uh, over the last, I would say, last 15 years. Uh, significant changes uh, to take care and address issues that we see need clarifications. Uh, and clearly we made significant changes in 2014 with our personal conduct policy because we believe- But the NFL is supposed to be in charge of the investigation, right? Uh, today, that is absolutely correct, yes. And if the sexual assault allegations are substantiated, that assault would obviously be a violation of the personal conduct policy as well, because sexual assault is a violation of the personal conduct policy in the NFL, right? Yes, absolutely. Now, let me direct your attention to the case of Tiffany Johnson. She came before us and testified before me uh, at the February roundtable and answered my questions, uh, basically alleging that Mr. Snyder intentionally touched her in a sexual manner against her will during a work dinner. And that is why you hired Mary Jo White to investigate those allegations, correct? That is correct. And as you sit here today, you don't have personally, personally, any knowledge of evidence that would dispute her allegations as you sit here today. 
Uh, that's a ongoing investigation that's being handled by Mary Jo White. She's very capable of doing that. And if it's uh, she'll substantial, she'll report, uh, report back to me when she's completed the investigation and, and we made a commitment. If to it make is that substantiated, public. if it's substantiated, Ms. Johnson's sexual battery claim would certainly warrant further disciplinary action. Correct? Uh, it's an ongoing investigation, so I, it would be inappropriate for me to comment on that. But we've said before. Uh, that we would consider discipline if the results of the investigation warrant it. So let me ask you this. You called the commander's workplace not only unprofessional but toxic for too long. Sir, in your view, is Dan Snyder's behavior and the workplace culture he created and fostered one of the worst and most toxic you've seen in your time as commissioner and your decades of service with the NFL? I have not seen a workplace in the NFL um, that is anywhere near what we saw in the context of that period of time for the Washington commanders. Sir, with all the challenges we have going on in, as a country, why is it important that we still put an end to sexual harassment and the toxic work environment at the Washington commanders? The gentleman well, I think may, we have. The gentleman uh, may the answer, gentleman. but the gentleman's time has expired. You may answer, but his time has expired. Yes, Mr. Goodell, go ahead. Uh, I think we have made those changes. Uh, and as I said, uh, it's verified by independent auditors that uh, the changes have been made in the organization and will continue to do that. But I, I don't think any of us want to have uh, workplaces that are not safe, uh, not allow all of our employees to feel safe and to be productive without harassment or without discrimination or any other issues that would be negative uh, in, a, in a professional workplace. Thank you. Uh, the gentleman from Kentucky, Mr. Comer, you are now recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm, before I begin my questions for Mr. Goodell, I'm going to have to correct the record once again for Mr. Conley. This is becoming a habit, I believe. Madam Chair, he's hanging out with Adam Schiff too much here lately. He just keeps making things up. Uh, in 2017, when the Republicans were in control of this committee, uh, we had 112 Trump administration witnesses testify. In 2018, Republicans still in control of this committee had uh, 59 administration witnesses. That was during the tenure of Chaffetz and Gowdy. In 2019, when the uh, Democrats retook the majority, you had 80 Trump administration witnesses testify. This year, now that Biden's president, you, you've had only 36 low-level uh, civil career civil servants testified and no cabinet secretary. So I want to correct the record on what Mr. Conley said. That was completely false. Uh, Commissioner Goodell, when did you learn this committee was investigating the Washington commanders? I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, ranking member. When, when, when did you learn the, uh, this committee was investigating the Washington commanders? Uh, I believe it was late October of last year, were 21. You were you surprised? Uh, yes. Why? Because I thought uh, we had handled this situation in a way that was responsible for a workplace. Um, we had, uh, as I said, implemented unprecedented discipline. Right. Uh, we had made the changes to the, the to transform the workplace. Uh, you, you were, you, you, one purpose. reason, one, let me get this right. One reason you were surprised is because uh, the NFL took action and held the bad actors accountable. And another reason would probably be because Congress really has no jurisdiction over the day-to-day -day operations of, of the NFL. The, uh, the committee Democrats asked the NFL to produce documents, correct? Yes. A lot of documents, right? I think we're over 460,000. 450,000, nearly half a million documents. Would it? <laughs> Would it surprise you, uh, Mr. Goodell, that committee Democrats haven't sent a single document request to the Biden administration about, infant, about the infant formula shortage? But they've requested half a million documents from the NFL. Does that surprise you? Uh, I'm not sure I have a, a, a point of view on that one. Uh, I was only focusing on uh, what the NFL was requested. The Democrats haven't even uh, just make this point, sir. The Democrats haven't even sent document requests to the Biden administration about the bots withdrawal from Afghanistan or the COVID origination or the impact of school closures on kids or what they're doing about the illegal immigrants and fentanyl streaming across the southern border or about skyrocketing inflation, energy prices. Not one request 
on these problems. And I think that's what the people in, in my district in Kentucky care about. And I'm pretty sure that's what most people in America care about. But, Commissioner, you had Beth Wilkinson conduct an investigation into the workplace conduct of the Washington commanders. And Mary Jo White's in the midst of a related one. You've both state you've already stated that. Uh, and you've also stated the commanders have made dramatic improvements at its organization. Is that correct? Yes. So why are we here? Why, why do you think we're here today? Because that's what a lot of uh, the people uh, on my side of the aisle, the Republican members, minority members, you know, wh why are we here? Why do you think we're here, sir? Ranking member, I was given an invitation and I felt it appropriate to show up when Congress asked me to show up. And uh, I believe that this matter was handled appropriately and I wanted to make sure I stated our point on that. And you believe that, let me get this right, you believe that uh, Dan Snyder uh, has been held accountable for a past toxic work environment, but the NFL continues to go in and monitor the situation and, and how would you describe the current situation of the work environment in the Redskins or Commanders football program? How, how are things today in the NFL's view? Well, ranking member, it's not just the NFL going in. Uh, more importantly, it's an independent organization, Vestry Light, uh, that um, is auditing, goes in and uh, is meeting with employees, going through processes, checking with HR, uh, again, we had uh, very woeful uh, HR uh, processes uh, for too long in that organization. Uh, they've been implemented into the organization now. It is actually a very professionally run organization from an HR standpoint. I think employees from the reports that I've seen in this uh, that you also have a copy of, um, employees feel comfortable with the environment and the workplace. Uh, they see a dramatic change. Um, and I think that the changes that the uh, um, commanders have made, um, including implementing uh, new executive leadership from President Jason Wright to the coach Rivera, uh, I think you see a dramatic change uh, in the organization. And Dan Snyder uh, made those hires, Dan Snyder made those changes. Um, but I also believe that Beth Wilkerson's uh, uh, recommendations to the workplace, the 10 recommendations she made, uh, we're very important to implement, and that's why we have ongoing oversight to that to make sure that that continues, which I think is the most important objective when we began this, is not just the accountability, but really to make sure that we change the direction of this workplace and make sure that it was safe for our employees. Very good. Ms. Time has expired. Thank you. The gentleman from Maryland, Mr. Raskin, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, after the Washington Post expose, um, of decades of sexual harassment at the team, Dan Snyder announced he'd be conducting an independent investigation into the toxic workplace culture. But then when allegations surfaced implicating Mr. Snyder himself, the NFL said it was taking over the investigation. So far, so good. But then in September of 2020, Mr. Goodell, you entered into a secret common interest agreement with Dan Snyder's team to share information about the investigation, which included an investigation into his own conduct. But you never told the women who were participating in interviews uh, with Ms. Wilkinson um, that there was this secret agreement to share information. So now Mr. Snyder got access to these interviews. How is that protecting the privacy and confidentiality of the women, which you have asserted is your key value here? Well, the common interest agreement, and I'm not an attorney, uh, is, is a legal document that helped us transfer the, the commander's investigation to the league investigation. Uh, it, is a, it is an agreement that did not prevent us from sharing information. Um, no, it guaranteed with, that you would share information, right? No, it allowed us to make sure that we could continue the investigation with Beth Wilkerson so that she would not have to go back and have to meet with some of the people she had already met as witnesses and have to go through that entire process again. Okay, uh, but let, let, let me- nothing, nothing in that common interest agreement, and by the way, I'll just point out too, that common interest agreement uh, was, uh, was entered into 
uh, just a couple of weeks after we took over the investigation, when it was clear, um, and be well, before it was clear that this committee was even focused on this issue. Well, right, this committee has nothing to do with it. The point is that Mr. Snyder had access to all of the interviews of the women whose uh, confidentiality interests you're now purporting to assert. I'm puzzled by this, too. Why would you pay hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars to investigate sexual harassment in a toxic workplace environment, but then publish no written report about it? You had a 243-page written report on Deflategate, as my colleague from Illinois pointed out, and you had uh, a, another published report about sexual harassment with the Miami Dolphins where the names were redacted, where people felt there was a confidentiality problem. Why wasn't redaction sufficient to protect the anonymity of the women who were involved in the case of the Washington team? Uh, Congressman, if I may, I just want to, uh, I think, clarify something. Uh, to my knowledge and uh, my understanding is Dan Snyder um, did not have access to those interviews. Uh, that Beth Wilkerson had done even while the team was overseeing that. Um, so you, you're uh, that saying he's, he's never seen those interviews, you're saying? Not to my knowledge, and I don't believe so. Okay, why wasn't redaction sufficient to protect the anonymity of the women being interviewed in the case of the Washington team when it was sufficient in the case of the Dolphins? In the case of the Dolphins, my recollection was no one had asked for any confidentiality. Not only did well, in the Washington no, they did matter, because their names were redacted. Have, can I finish? Please. Uh, not only in, in Washington, not only did they ask for confidentiality, in many cases, uh, we also promised them confidentiality. Yes, that's sure what redaction that is for. Work. Okay, the, that's what redaction the, is redaction for. Redaction doesn't, Congressman, with all due respect, redaction doesn't always work in my world. I promise you, okay. uh, we want we want to, we need to take extra steps to make sure these people who did come through and courageously come forward. All right, uh, I'm gonna I gotta reclaim my time here because I got another question for you. Between um, August of 2020 and April of 21, uh, while the Wilkinson investigation was taking place, Dan Snyder conducted a parallel investigation of the women who spoke out, and he filed 10 lawsuits in seven states around the country in an effort to expose and undermine those women who had allegedly participated in the Washington Post series. One federal judge described Snyder's legal actions as, quote, an effort to burden and harass individuals formerly associated with the team who may have acted as sources for the Washington Post, adding that the subpoenas that he issued were, quote, being done for what the court perceives is an improper purpose to discover the sources for the embarrassing and damning Washington Post story. So, uh, did you do anything to try to stop Dan Snyder from harassing these women in court after they'd been sexually harassed? And do you condemn this action by Mr. Snyder? I think any action that would discourage people from coming forward uh, would be inappropriate and absolutely wrong. Uh, in fact, uh, when we took over the investigation, we, met, we told the, the Washington commanders that they were not to do any investigations. Um, by April 21, I think is the date you gave me, my recollection from your question, um, we were in the final stages and Beth had probably met with most of um, the uh, men and women that wanted to come forward and we were getting close to uh, concluding our investigation, our best investigation. So you condemn that form of legal harassment against the women who came forward? I'm Chair Thompson. As I said, any, any kind of harassment against people who want to come forward and tell the truth, uh, we, would, we would not permit and we would not uh, find acceptable. The gentleman's time has expired. The gentleman, uh, uh, you were allowed to respond to his question. Okay, we are now recognized uh, from Texas, Mr. Fallon, the gentleman from Texas. Commissioner, thank you. I want to be uh, frank with you. I'm angry and uh, I'm concerned. Uh, last week marked the 50th anniversary of Watergate, which was a scandal that led to a series of felony convictions and the first resignation of a United States president. And it tore at the very fabric of American society. And a scant seven and a half years ago, another scandal rocked our nation, threatening the very core and foundation of our republic, that being, of course, Deflategate. 
where in an AFC championship game, the NFL footballs, the pigskins, the rock, the pill, the hand egg, the melon, and the leather was mysteriously underinflated by two PSI, pounds per square inch. This led to a multifaceted investigation, months long, thousands of dollars spent, where the goat, Mr. California Cool, the real Slim Brady, the master of the tuck, the Lord of the Rings, Tom Terrific, Tom Brady was suspended by the league. Mr. Kushner, Mr. Kushner, I'm sure you're aware that many in New England worship Thomas Edward Patrick Brady Jr. as a demigod of sorts. And being a New England native myself, I don't blame him one bit. So my point here, sir, is that this country simply can't afford another scandal, particularly a preventable one. So I'm surprised that in reviewing the league rules to prepare for this hearing, this critical hearing, we uncovered that the NFL requires footballs today to be inflated to a gauge pressure of between 12.5 and 13.5 PSI. And the rules don't state and specify the temperature at which these measurements are to be made. And the pressure temperature law states that there is a positive correlation between the temperature and the pressure of a gas when uh, there's a fixed volume in mass. So how can we, Commissioner, guarantee the consistency of the PSI levels of footballs moving forward? Well, Congressman, it's been uh, quite a while since I focused on this issue, but I'll tell you uh, our procedures now are that our game officials make that check uh, prior to the game. And so they are the ones that do that uh, individually, and then the balls are under protected order from that point on. Um, they are not allowed to be tampered with from that point on. So I think uh, hopefully we found that consistency and make sure that uh, the rules apply to everyone and that they're applied equally. And Commissioner, are you currently in New York City? Yes, I am. All right, so you're at sea level, and we're here in Washington, D.C. at sea level. Uh, sea level. So, sir, what do we do in Denver at Mile High Stadium with 5,280 feet uh, high above sea level? Uh, and how do we account for the variances that could and do occur when there's differing atmospheric pressures vis-a-vis -vis the PSI in your balls? Well, Congressman, it's one of the reasons why and several of your colleagues have mentioned uh, that we had a lengthy report uh, following Deflategate. Uh, and the reason why is because we had several studies that went 50 pages or more uh, talking about these exact issues. I can't recite exactly what they were at this point in time, but they considered altitude, they considered uh, temperature, they considered all those issues and the variance. Uh, that's why that report was so lengthy, is because we wanted to put those, uh, those procedures out as well as the research that went into that. Well, Mr. Commissioner, I'd like to offer my sincere apologies because this hearing as I said earlier, uh, I'm angry and upset because this hearing is a sham and it's a farce and it's a clown show and it's a terrible waste of your time as the CEO of a multi-billion dollar privately held enterprise. It's a waste of this committee's time and worst of all, it's a waste of the American taxpayer's time. We're here uh, suffering inflation at a 41 year high, 8.6%, gasoline at $5 a gallon, highest than it, uh, it's ever been in our history. We have an a southern border wide open, more porous than in 250 years, and the drug cartels are making record profits, and this unchecked narcotics trafficking has fueled an opioid crisis, which is directly responsible for the deaths of 100,000 Americans. And early, you know, that's why I mentioned I was angry and I'm upset. And we're here harassing the NFL, and I might add, engaging in a partisan bizarre witch hunt of an NFL team and trespassing without just cause into the eternal affairs of a privately held entity when we face, face these other crises on multiple fronts. Quite frankly, it's disgusting, it's a disgrace, and Madam Chair, we can and must do better. I yield back. Thank you, Ms. Fallon. And we're going to have the ONDCP director next Monday so you can direct those questions about the drug trade to him. Um, we are going to now call on Mr. Khanna for his five minutes of questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you uh, also to you, Representative Krishnamurthy, Chairman Krishnamurthy, for your leadership uh, on these issues. I know you've been uh, advocating and leading on these issues for uh, a number of years, uh, just to have uh, basic uh, equality uh, in all our workplaces. 
Thank you. Chairman uh, Goodell, I'm a, uh, of course, 49ers fan. I represent uh, Silicon Valley. And uh, I'm a fan not just of the team uh, on the field, but I am sure you know Hannah Gordon uh, there, who's a, a senior executive. And she has participated on a number of panels, actually, in Silicon Valley about creating uh, a workplace that empowers women, uh, about making sure that women have equal pay, about tackling issues of childcare, uh, about tackling uh, issues of uh, discrimination. And she's, I think, extraordinary. Uh, she's really helped shape the culture uh, of the 49ers. And so my question for you is, do you look at clubs like the 49ers and extraordinary leaders like Hannah Gordon uh, in seeing what best practices may be uh, for all the clubs in the league? We absolutely do. Um, Hannah Gordon was actually a former employee of ours. Um, she is uh, outstanding. She is a true professional. She made a difference here in our organization, and she's doing that again with the 49ers. I have nothing but respect for her. But uh, as part of uh, the changes that have happened over the last several years is uh, an elevation, I would call it, of uh, sharing of best practices um, amongst all our clubs from this office as well as the 32 clubs. As we stated earlier, they all have their own uh, workforces and workplaces. Uh, those are their prerogative. But we do believe that uh, understanding and sharing is an important element to making sure we have better workplaces. We also, uh, at the league level, have had many times where um, we require certain training mechanisms. Some of that came out of 2014 with respect to domestic violence and sexual assault. Um, all personnel are required to go through annual training. Uh, in addition, uh, we made sure that sexual harassment is a requirement of all personnel in the NFL. That includes clubs, leagues, owners, commissioners. Um, so that we can do everything we possibly can to make sure that our workforces are um, and workplaces are safe and people have a full understanding of what's expected of them. I appreciate that. And I hope you'll look not just to Anna Gordon and the leadership on issues of gender equity, but the 49ers in my district have provided STEM education for people left out. I guess my point, Chairman Goodell, is I, I know people are focused on the legal issues, but you know this better than I do, that uh, if you look at the top three or four shows that uh, the American public watch, I was shocked when I realized this. It's Sunday night football, Monday night football, Thursday night football. NCIS is the only one that uh, competes. And I think you would agree that given the cultural significance of the NFL, and I grew up as a football fan, many of us on Congress are football fans, I think there's a higher bar where what you do really matters to shaping the culture of the nation. And I guess my request, my plea to you would be to realize that responsibility, uh, obviously on issues of gender, of issues of equality, of issues of helping get young people involved in uh, STEM and education, and just realize that you, know, you have a huge platform and uh, it make a big difference to the culture of, of the country. And that's, I think, the spirit of these hearings, as opposed to some legalistic dispute, is just what can you do it with the platform you have? The Congress and I could not agree with you more. Um, we take that responsibility seriously. We understand the impact we have uh, in our communities, as well as nationally and even globally. Uh, and that's why we have worked hard to try to meet that standard. We're not perfect, um, but we work hard to, whenever we see something that we can improve on, uh, we, we dig in and we do our best to make sure that we're a leading voice and somebody, something, an, an institution that people can look to to say they're doing things the right way. And um, I appreciate your comments. Um, it, it's, it's well beyond gender to your point. It's diversity in general. It's making sure that we do everything in our communities, including uh, making sure that our communities are addressing the, the difficult issues that some of you have talked about today making sure that our teams are playing a, an active force in some of that, uh, whether it's our work on how do we get people to vote. Uh, our clubs are actively using their facilities, are actively using their platform, which to encourage people to get out and vote. I appreciate that. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Kana. And now I'm going to be calling on Mr. Grothman for his five minutes. Thank you. It's just, as was just pointed out, Mr. Godel, you have a 
attract tens of millions of dollars from Americans who watch your games every week. Uh, you've got a large captive audience. Would you agree the NFL has a tremendous amount of power and ability to influence American culture? Yes, Congressman, I think I just uh, made that point. I agree with you. I'm a little bit troubled by your embracement of what I'll call left, woke, anti-American propaganda, uh, way exaggerating any amount of racism in, in America. Under your leadership, the NFL has perpetuated the narrative that America is a racist country, including the myth of systemic racism in policing. You've committed hundreds of millions of dollars to, quote, fight racism in America. Uh, you've kind of promoted uh, the Black Lives Matter movement, and of course the heads of that movement uh, were Marxists, they're kind of anti-family. I realize it's a diffuse organization, and not everybody uh, believes in that, but nevertheless, the founders believed in that. Um, uh, the NFL is committed to leveraging the NFL network with its other media prop properties to place increased emphasis on raising awareness and promoting education and social justice issues of our fans. That's what you say. Uh, Mr. Goodell, studies show that when you control for uh, crime rates, there is no systemic racism in policing. Mr. Goodell, could you use the, your opportunity to raise awareness among your fans about the fact that study after study shows that when controlling for variables such as crime rates, there is no significant relationship between a person's race and whether or not they'll be arrested or shot at by police? Do you think you could use your, your power to, to get that out there given what you've done in the past? Uh, Congressman, first, uh, I, I make no apologies for fighting racism. Um, we feel, believe strongly that there's no place for racism and hatred in our society. That's not um, the point. The, I, the also, question. I also, well, I'm just trying to clarify a point that I heard in your, in your document, in your question. Or, um, the second point to it is um, we have an incredibly strong relationship with law enforcement. We are supportive of the work that they do. We understand the difficult job that they have and the dangerous job they have. But we all want great policing. Um, we want to make sure that the police are properly resourced and properly equipped. But more importantly, our work has been focused on how do we develop better relationships between the law enforcement and the communities. And personally, I've gone into some of those communities with law enforcement and done what we call ride-alongs. And in that context, you understand the gap that we have to fill between what law enforcement is faced with, how they do their jobs, and what the community expects from them. And I think more communication, more work to, to try to improve that relationship is not only going to improve policing, but I think it's going to improve our societies in general and our communities. Uh, Mr. Goodell, study after study shows there is not systemic racism in our police departments. Um, there is a narrative out there, for example, who to this day mislead the public as to what happened in Ferguson. The Black Lives Matter movement fanned the flames out there, even though Barack Obama's own Justice Department found that shooting was justified. And you have kind of piled on with the narrative that we have a fundamental problem. Will you do what you can uh, to use your mouthpiece, given the damage I think you've created in the past, to uh, straight the record, straight, uh, straighten out the record with regard to racism in our police departments? Well, Congressman, with all due respect, I think, again, we've been incredibly supportive okay. of law enforcement, and we'll continue that. So okay. uh, we'll I'll, I'll give our, you another we'll question. Our... I'll give you another question. Okay. This is on the Internet, and you never know what you can believe on the Internet. I look at the Internet, and, and we see that you're making about $64 million a year. Not as an owner, not as somebody who's taking personal risk, um, not somebody who has to block or tackle or risk your body. Um, to a certain extent, the NFL is profitable because they shake down cities, tell them they're gonna, you're gonna, we're gonna leave your city unless you build a big, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars of stadium. Um, do you think it's appropriate given the monopoly the NFL has, that you have no personal risk, either physical risk or financial risk in your job. Do you, could you comment on that $64 million salary? Uh, Congressman, uh, I started as an intern uh, nearly 40 years ago uh, in the NFL. I, and I um, am very fortunate to have made a career of being at the NFL, something, an organization I'm proud of. I'm happy to have had the opportunities that I've had. And people have mentored me and given me those opportunities. 
Um, my compensation is something uh, that is determined um, with discretion from the ownership. They make that determination. I am uh, very fortunate to be here in this job. I'm proud of it and I'm, uh, I wish I could say anything more to you that would make you more comfortable, but those are determinations that are made by the ownership. Thank you. Thank you for the questions, Mr. Grothman. Um, one thing I just wanted to clarify, uh, the commissioner said that the difference between releasing the Miami Dolphins report and the Wilkinson investigation is that witnesses in the Miami Dolphins case did not request their identities to remain confidential. That is not correct. According to page 54 of the Dolphins report, it says witnesses, quote, specifically asked that their identities remain confidential. A few even seem to fear potential retaliation for cooperating with our inquiry, and we honored their request, close quote. I'd now like to rep, uh, recognize the gentlewoman from Ohio, Ms. Brown, for her questions. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I appreciate this uh, committee holding this hearing. Uh, Commissioner Godell, uh, you have repeatedly touted that the NFL should be held to a high standard, and um, I applaud you for that. You have also assured us that the NFL took, when the NFL took over the investigation of the commanders, it was to, quote, provide greater public assurance of the integrity and independence of this investigation. And yet, um, it's been reported eight days after the NFL assumed oversight of the Wilkinson investigation, um, assigned it, was, it signed an agreement with the commanders. Um, a secret agreement is how it, some might call it. But the agreement gave Dan Schneider the command and the commanders the right to veto um, the release information or communication shared with the Wilkinson investigation, investigation. So my question, yes or no, Mr. Goodell, is it true that the commanders blocked the NFL from turning over 40,000 documents from the internal investigation to this committee? in response to its October 2021 request? Congressman, uh, Congresswoman, sorry. The, um, this was a legal agreement that allowed the transfer of the, um, uh, the investigation that was begun under the Washington Commander's Authority and was transferred to the NFL. I'm not a lawyer, um, but I fully understand uh, from our people, my understanding is that it did not prevent us from sharing any information um, Just reclaiming my time. Is that a yes or a no, Mr. Goldell? I'm sorry. It's the answer to my question. It's neither. I'm trying to be, bring clarity to the question. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to respectfully reclaim my time. The NFL. Um, it's also been reported that the NFL stood by while Mr. Schneider ran a shadow investigation. Um, deploying private investigators to the homes of his accusers in an effort to intimidate them while he offered them hush money to buy their silence. Um, Mr. Goldell, did you or anyone from the NFL tell Mr. Snyder or his attorneys to stop using private investigators? Yes or no, please. We, uh, as soon as we took over the investigation, we made it clear to them that they should not be investigating uh, any of these matters. Secondly, uh, we asked that we, the, the commanders uh, reach out to current employees as well as former employees to encourage them to participate. So any, uh, any efforts to intimidate witnesses or prevent them from doing it would be inconsistent with that. What about the subpoenaing of private emails and phone records from former employees about confidential communications with the Washington Post regarding um, the commander's toxic workplace? Can you? Tell me about that. I'm not sure I understand your question, Congresswoman. Did you did you ask for that to cease, or was there any engagement from you to stop that usage? For what to cease? I'm sorry. The subpoenaing of private emails and phone records from former employees about confidential communications with the Washington Post regarding the uh, commander's toxic workplace. I'm not clear on what that is. I'm happy to follow up with our staff and our attorneys to, to make sure we get you an answer, but I am not familiar with that. Okay. All right. Well, after hearing um, some of the questions that have been put forth and your responses, it, it seems to me that the NFL 
uh, picked a side in this investigation, which silenced the voices of employees and allowed Mr. Snyder to peddle his own version of the facts. And I think it's been stated here while um, I, again, applaud the efforts and the steps that you have taken to reverse course. It is, uh, I, I associate myself with the comments of my colleague, Mr. Uh, Rokana, we can and we must do better. Um, we should not allow, allow the owners to decide what information is made public and we should not allow them to silence their employees with non-disclosure agreements that conceal um, workplace misconduct. So it is um, my hope and my belief that this committee must act to pass meaningful legislation that will protect the workers in the lead and around the country. And so, um, well, all sincerity, I thank you for coming forward and taking the time to uh, answer this committee's questions and um, hope that you will continue to take the steps um, to lead the nation as an example of um, what it takes to have um, a productive, quality, safe uh, workplace. Thank you so much. And with that, uh, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you. The gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Keller, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair and Ranking Member Comer. Um, this committee had a joint roundtable last February, and the subject came up. And, and my position on this is the same, and that is there is no excuse for abusive behavior or harassment in any work environment. In any instances of such behavior, they should be fully investigated and violators held accountable. But as I also pointed out in February, this committee has been tasked with investigating waste, fraud, and abuse of taxpayer dollars and ensuring government agencies are operating properly. The fact that we are not discussing historically high inflation, prompting the highest Fed rate hike since 1994, a nationwide gas average topping $5 a gallon, or the fentanyl crisis exacerbated by disastrous open border policies is unacceptable. Instead, we are now conducting congressional oversight over a private organization already undergoing an investigation. Madam Chair, this committee must refocus efforts on the most pressing issues affecting the American people not duplicative ongoing efforts to investigate misconduct. Uh, my question, uh, Mr. Goodell, uh, what steps has the NFL taken to promote safe working environment for its employees? We've made a, a number of steps uh, going back several years. Uh, one, and I mentioned some of this, but uh, annual training that's required across all personnel from clubs to league officials, employees, including players, owners, commissioners. Uh, we've had um, sexual harassment uh, training also. Uh, we continue to do that on an annual basis, which is also required. So we continue to put this front and center. I've had several conversations with our clubs about the importance of maintaining professional um, workplaces, that it's their responsibility. Uh, so. I think the steps that have been made um, clearly have had an impact. Um, but again, we're not perfect, but we want to make sure that our employees feel safe and they have a place where if they have, and I should have mentioned one other thing is uh, mandatory hotlines. We at the league have had a mandatory hotline for um, people to um, confidentially raise any issues that they think are important. Uh, and we also uh, have required that of all our 32 clubs. So. I think steps to make it easier for people to report uh, if there are violations or alleged violations, and most importantly for us to follow up responsibly have been welcome and needed and uh, are the important steps that need to be taken to keep a, a, a workplace safe and productive. Okay. The commanders are required to submit semi-annual reporting assessments to the NFL through July 31st of 2023. What sort of metrics does the team report, and do these metrics provide an accurate picture of the commander's workplace culture? Uh, they actually don't um, give it to us. It's it put in a report. It's actually gathered by uh, an independent firm, Vestry Light. Um, they go in, they meet with employees, they meet with the executives as well as HR and anybody they wish, they have full access. Um, the report that we saw in February that was uh, shared with all of you 
uh, indicated a substantial transformation of the organization. Um, many of that was many of those uh, uh, that were in the organization said that it's a major change and a positive change and something um, where they feel that we're there in an organization that they're proud of and, and they think that the policies that have been implemented by the commanders and the executives all the way up to the ownership are productive and helpful. So, so they're doing everything that's been put in place by the NFL to, uh, to create a culture that's, that would be an acceptable, acceptable workplace environment. They're, they're, they're yes, meeting. Think they're, they're, they're meeting. They're clearly. They're, they're meeting they their, clearly have, their goals. I'm sorry. They're, they're meeting their goals, I guess, is my question. And the things that they've been I, asked I would, to do. I think this work is something that is, uh, you never achieve the goal line. I think you have to continue to work on this. Uh, but I, I think the steps that have been taken, uh, the recommendations made by Beth Wilkerson that were implemented by the commanders. Um, the executives and the ownership have uh, taken this seriously and made significant changes to their organization. There will be more work to do. We all have more work to do. Yeah, uh, but, but, but I, think, I guess the uh, point is everything they've been asked to comply with, they've been complying with, as they should, okay? But they've been doing that. Is that. that is that, correct. That's correct. That the commanders have been fined $10 million following the initial investigation into the matter last year, among other penalties. If the commanders have been meeting the required outcomes of what the NFL has put forth and we you say of course there's always training and things that we need to do but if they, they've made this progress and been doing the things that the other organizations have been doing quite frankly uh, why do we need to have you here today the gentleman's time has expired the gentleman may answer the question as I said, Congressman, I was invited. I think um, I wanted the opportunity to say that we really have uh, made significant changes to the commander's organization. They have, uh, and I think it's um, it's an important lesson and uh, instructive in the sense of making sure that we have participation of the employees and identifying what the culture is, identifying the efforts, and making sure independent people look at that and make recommendations, and those recommendations are implemented to organizations so that they can get better. Okay, so Jim, the, the, the NFL is going to continue doing that, and I'm, I'm glad they are. I'm glad you're doing those things in the NFL so people have a safe place to work. I think now the committee can focus on things that uh, they should be focused on to help the American Madam people. With Madam Chair, I, gentlemen, I, I, time has expired. Mr. Johnson from Georgia is recognized. Mr. Johnson from Georgia. Hey, thank you, Madam Chair, and I would implore my colleagues on the other side of the aisle to have respect for the chair and to cease and desist conversation when that gavel comes down. Mr. Goodell, uh, credible, numerous, and serious allegations of sexual misconduct have been made against the Washington commanders and owner Dan Snyder, who also stands accused of maintaining a toxic work environment that victimizes female employees of the organizations. It should be noted that Mr. Snyder turned down an invitation to appear before this committee, and I thank you for agreeing to appear before us today. And you do so because you understand that Congress has, an, uh, has granted the NFL an exemption from the antitrust laws which enables NFL teams to collaborate on TV contracts. And the NFL does not want Congress to tamper with that antitrust exemption. Uh, am I correct, Mr. Goodell? Well, we do. Uh, I'm here because I feel it's our responsibility to do that. And, and well, you would never, you, you would never refuse you a, a right. request by the committee to come to testify well, before the committee because you're concerned about what Congress can do about the NFL's antitrust exemption. Isn't that correct? If I could, let me just address the first well, question. Well, no, I of just want to get a is yes that, or no that, answer for that question. It's not a yes or no answer, is it? Yeah, I would, yeah, it I, is. I, it is, Mr. Goodell. Okay. Please co we, cooperate we, with me we, now. We, I, I'm trying I'm, I'm to, working sir. with you. Just answer my question, sir. Uh, I mean, the reason why you come is because you respect our ability to tamper with the NFL exemption, uh, antitrust exemption, correct? I'm here because I believe you should hear our experience with the Washington commanders, as I said. Secondly, regarding okay, the antitrust all right. Well, let me, let me move I'm on. Trying to address your, I'm trying to address your antitrust exemption. I think the antitrust exemption that was put back in the early 60s 
has been very good uh, for well, uh, yeah, It has been for very the profitable for the NFL, and I'm going to uh, reclaim my time. The findings of the NFL's investigation into allegations of sexual harassment by Dan Snyder and the Commanders organization remain secret, and Mr. Snyder has himself has not been held accountable by the NFL. Additionally, the NFL has entered into an agreement with Dan Snyder, which prevents the findings of the internal investigation from coming to light. Every step of the way, the NFL appears to have been part of a cover-up that has resulted in credible allegations of the maintenance of a culture of sexual harassment at the Washington Commanders being swept under the rug. Meanwhile, for all we know, women working for the Washington Commanders are still being subjected to a hostile workplace environment while the NFL has stood by Dan Snyder. Statements that the NFL has held Dan Snyder accountable are impossible to verify because of your unwillingness to reveal the findings of the internal investigation. With the antitrust exemption that the NFL enjoys, which has enabled it to be wildly profitable as an enterprise, it is no secret that the influence your company has in the nation and across the world, Mr. Goodell, uh, is uh, fundamental. Why not use this as an opportunity to positively influence the public by holding Dan Snyder accountable for his actions? Well, we believe we have held him accountable. Um, as we said, we had an independent investigation. Um, in what way have you held him accountable? He was fined over $10 million. He stepped away from the organization now for a year. Um, he's required as so, a- So the, organi so, so so the investigation to... then has been completed. If it has resulted in a fine, why haven't those uh, results been released to the public? We, we released a summary report, which as I- Why not stated, the full report? Because there is no full written report. Why not? We had an oral, we had an oral report. Why, why has there not written. been a full written report rendered on this uh, sure. very important issue? There was a five page report that not only talked about our findings in a summary form, that talked about the toxic organization and the facts that we needed to implement new policies and procedures there. We put those recommendations from the independent investigator, Beth Wilkinson, and they implemented and adopted each of those 10 recommendations. A, a five-page report, Mr. S Mr. Uh, Goodell. Time is the gentleman's right time has expired. The gentleman's time has expired. Um, we now call upon Mr. Gibbs from Ohio. You now recognize Mr. Gibbs for five minutes. Yeah, thank you. First, before I, I yield my time, I want to uh, I, uh, associate myself with the comments made by Ranking Member Comer about, I hope we have some hearings in the future with Secretary of Cabinet Secretaries dealing with uh, our border, dealing with our energy crisis. We've not had a Cabinet Secretary for this committee, this Congress. It would be nice to have that. And uh, so I'm going to yield my rest of my time to Congressman uh, Burgess Owens, uh, former NFL football player. I yield my time, Teddy. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Uh, and thank you, Chairman Maloney. Uh, Madam, Madam Chair, I have a parliamentary inquiry. Chairman may ask his uh, parliamentary inquiry. Yes, is it uh, proper for a congressman who or congressperson who does not serve on a committee but has been waived onto the committee uh, to participate in the questioning of a witness uh, without any further proceedings? Uh, he's been waived on the committee, and yes, you can have a member on the committee yield their time to a waived on committee member. Thank so, you, and I yield back. And Chair Ms. Mr. Mr. Owens, you're now are recognized. Thank you. Can I also reclaim the time just taking a few minutes for me, please? Yes, you can. Thank you so much. I want to thank again uh, Chairwoman Maloney, Ranking Member Comer, and members of the committee for holding this, this hearing and especially for allowing me to participate. I'd like to thank the Commissioner Godell for coming to the committee today. It's long been a long dream of mine to ask commissioners some questions. And I'm going to take a little different uh, tack, something I'm very, very concerned about with NFL. The term racism is thrown around today with alarming and casual frequency. For example, according to Newsweek, uh, re uh, requiring black individuals to get an ID to vote is racist. 
according to NBC News, requiring a college application, application, applic applicants to include letters of recommendation in their application is racist. And my absolute favorite, a recent US Today headline asking if math is racist. What's truly racist is this condescending soft bigotry of low expectation that has far too long plagued my community. It was prevalent when I entered the NFL in 1973 when it was understood that certain positions were reserved for whites only. Positions of leadership and intelligence like quarterback, center, middle linebacker, free safety, and head coaches were considered off limits to black Americans. Doug Williams finally broke the, the white quarterback barrier in 1988 as the NFL's first black quarterback to both start and win a Super Bowl championship. Yet, Commissioner, decades later, despite all this progress on and off the field, we're once again forced to discuss, under your watch, the NFL's engagement in racism behind the scenes. In June 2021, the NFL was forced to announce it was ending its practice of race norming when paying out compensation to players experiencing brain damage due to con concussions on the field. The NFL has, for years, used separate tests based on race to score players' cognitive threshold. The test taken by black players was different than that by white players. The result determined if financial compensation was warranted. Doctors were required to use race-based norms that assumed black players were inherently less intelligent than their white teammates. If this sounds like a throwback to the Jim Crow laws of Deep South, that's because it is. This practice came to an end only after lawsuits against the league by two, two former black NFL players who were accidentally given the cognizant test normally reserved for white players. When they both qualified for compensation, the NFL demanded that they be tested again. This time, when the clinician, clinician, clinician applied the race norming algorithm recommended by the NFL program man, uh, manual, they were denied compensation. As a result of this practice, NFL compensated injured black players and their families less than white players and their families. To say that black players should be judged by a lower standard of brain function than their white teammates is without question a perfect example of real racism. Uh, <clears throat> due to time, I have a couple questions, just one, some, some yes, yes and no's for, if you wouldn't mind. Do you acknowledge that until 2021, the race norming algorithm was used to evaluate intelligence of black players as part of the NFL class action settlement? Uh, I, was it a specific time that you're asking about? But this, as you know, I think this was this is an issue that was part of a settlement with our former players. Yes. Uh, federal judge oversaw. Yes. It. Yeah. I just, um, I just, uh, commissioner, if you wouldn't, you wouldn't mind, commissioner, the NFL. commissioner, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, yes. This was back in the 27 and 13 uh, settlement. Do you are you rec did you recognize the race norming algorithm was part of that settlement? Uh, you, you you commented on that, and yeah. I know the NFL has apologized the, the federal, for that. The federal, Yes, the two parties agreed to that because it was a standard medical okay. uh, all right. so, procedure. So, yes, so this, what we agreed so, to do, right, right, what we agreed okay. to do just like recently to is, time, is change that. I'd like to reclaim my plan. Thank sure. you so much. Uh, do you agree that the NFL's use of a scale for black Americans versus those of any other race is the a, is a definition of systemic racism? Real simple, yes or no? It was not required by any doctor to use those standards, and we yes, adopted well, new they, standards. They, if, if, it was not required, the then, if it was not required, then why was it used? Because any day there was a separate system that, used for that was a med Okay, that, so, that's a medical standard far okay, beyond so, the so NFL. So that being said, I know you apologize for it. NFL apologize. Um, I'll just say, let me just let me just say this real quickly. Speaking on behalf of my my black and white brothers who gave their their careers to make sure that we got past racism. This is an atrocity. And the fact the NFL has judged black people at a, at a different rate in intelligence than white people is something that needs to be looked at. And I look forward to having this long conversation with you and we, uh, uh, as we get into the coming months. And I thank you and I'll yield back. The gentleman yields uh, back. Congressman. The gentlewoman from Michigan, Ms. Talib, is now recognized for five minutes. May, may I? Thank you so much. And well, I, I, I just I, want to I, commend my colleague, you know, this is why lived experience is so incredibly important. Uh, as a survivor of sexual harassment, it works my first job outside of college. I can tell you uh, it is so incredibly important that Congress leads on this issue in making sure that everyone is safe away from discrimination. Again, that can be incredibly traumatic um, and can last a very long time uh, with people as they move from career to career. You know, when dozens of women came forward with allegations of a toxic workplace, 
at the commanders, uh, team owner Dan Snyder stated, and I quote, I have admittedly been too hands off as an owner and have allowed others to have day-to-day -day control to the detriment of our organization. Commissioner, you were personally briefed on internal investigation into the commanders, as you know, and sitting here today, do you believe that Dan Snyder was hands off team owner? Was he a hands off team owner, sir? It, it, uh, in my judgment. Yes or no, was he hands off? The, 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 the owner is responsible for the workplace. Yeah. Okay, the committee has recently obtained evidence uh, shows that exactly how involved Dan Snyder was in fueling the toxic workplace environment. The committee conducted a deposition of Dave uh, Popkin, who was chief operating officer of the commanders for a number of years. He worked with Mr. Snyder every single day. Do you want to know, he said basically, this is what he said to us, that he said, quote, both hands on when it came to Mr. Snyder. So he's very directly involved. Mr. Uh, Popkin also detailed his role in decisions big and small and I'd like to talk about one of those decisions, if I may, Commissioner, that I found particularly troubling. In the fall of 2002, the team hired a new head coach who, accordingly, according to Mr. Palkin, quote, groped a member, groped a member of the public relations staff at an event. According to Mr. Palkin, he consulted with Mr. Snyder about what to do, even though, as he said, quote, I knew what we were going to do. Do you know what that what he said, what he was talking about, Commissioner here? And of course, it was nothing. He was going to do nothing. Mr. Popkin said that he, Mr. Snyder, decided, quote, we weren't going to confront the new coach. Commissioner Goodell, Mr. Popkin participated in a number of interviews with the law firm handling the internal investigation. Has NFL looked into these allegations against the former coach? Listen, all of those allegations has should he? be treated has seriously. He? You're working with the all firm, has he, sir? All, all all these allegations have been treated. So, so the allegation seriously. of groping a public relations staffer was investigated. All I can tell you is we've hired an independent investigator. Yep, got it. I got it. They, they, did the same, the they did the same thing at that previous job I was at. They did the no. same thing and wrote it off. No, Committee no. staff conducted an, uh, another deposition, Commissioner, this time a former president of business operations, a CEO, uh, Brian uh, Lafina. Lafina. Uh, he testified Not that he me. raised allegations made, sorry, sir, I know, made by Rachel uh, Elgelson, a former commander's employee, about the misconduct uh, uh, of commander's executive Larry Michael. Ms. Ingelson alleged that Mr. Michael, quote, touch her, it would touch her face in an unwanted fashion, talk about her looks in front of the large audiences and kiss her. Mr. Lafimina says that he brought these allegations to Mr. Snyder's attention in July 2018. According to uh, Mr. Fima uh, Lafmina, Mr. Snyder's response was, quote, Larry was a sweetheart and Larry wouldn't hurt anybody. Two years later, in July 2020, Mr. Michael resigned from the club after seven, I repeat, seven former employees said he routinely discussed the physical appearance of female colleagues and sexual and disparaging overtones. He even made crude comments about an intern. Take a listen to what he said, Commissioner, if we can play the audio, please. Up the OTAs in this edition of Redskins Nation right after this. Way to go, buddy. Thanks, man. I couldn't tell if you wanted me to go longer or shorter or what. I, I do think our, 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 our intern is looking better every day. I do think our intern is a little blonde there talking to Ace. She's a little blonde and black. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. The she's, hell of an outfit in the middle of June. She's looking freaking pretty good. I don't know what the fuck's going on there. So. Unbelievable. So disgusting. Mr. Snyder, Snyder wasn't hands off. He simply turned a blind eye to, to the conduct he didn't want us all to see, right? This is all too common in the American workplace. Commissioner Goodell, is this acceptable way to run a team? That, that example you just showed me is, is not acceptable. And it's, it could have been your daughter, sir. It could have, I mean, it, it literally is I disgusting. I completely agree Would with you that. commit to doing more? I mean, right now, you keep saying you did everything possible. You're studying, you have to do more. Yes or no, are you willing to do more? Yes, of course I'm willing to do more. I never said that we were going to stop. I actually said the opposite. But we will continue. But you have the authority to recommend that Dan Snyder be removed as a team owner. Okay, the, you the, can the, recommend the that Dan Snyder be time has as expired. A team owner. The gentleman may answer her question. Your time has expired. You may answer her question. Should Dan Snyder I, be I removed? I think I'm good. Remove him. Will you remove him? I don't have the authority to remove him, Congresswoman. Okay. 
The time has expired. The gentleman from Texas, Mr. Sessions, is recognized for five minutes, and votes have been called. Okay. Madam Chairman, thank you very much. I appreciate you and Mr. Comer um, trying to work together. Uh, Commissioner, I want to thank you for taking time to be with us today. Uh, I think you're, you've heard that Congress is sometimes uh, assertive about some of the ideas that we have. But I thank you for taking your time to be here. I think answering questions that dealt with someone else's behavior, also your own, because as commissioner, you have a responsibility for the league. I want to thank you for trying to work with people across the spectrum, athletes, coaches, fans, television networks, owners, uh, and to tell you that I think that from my perspective, and I, I have been a football fan for many, many years. Uh, Jerry Jones is a very close and dear friend of mine, and I've watched Mr. Jones and the Cowboys, as well as almost every other league in the team, a team in the league, to be able to work through athletes, circumstances, and things that, that happen. I think you've done an outstanding job and I think that it said volumes to me about the changes that have been made within the commander organization. I think that we're all entitled to make mistakes, and I think we're entitled to try and make up for it. I think it sends volumes, says volumes that you as commissioner will lead the effort to have conversation, not just with owners, but really the teams that are involved about that which you believe would be in the best interest of the league, because that is really what your job is. But Commissioner, I want to say this to you. I think it's also important that we here in Congress recognize we're not perfect either. And we do things that can be seen in ways that are not always the same way everybody in Congress would want. But I have watched in this town over the last few years about an attack against Dan Snyder, an attack at the former Redskin organization because of the name that was selected many, many, many years ago in a team and a name that became influential across the country in a positive fashion, positive fashion, not just with perhaps uh, African-American athletes, but other athletes who chose to come and play here. But Mr. Commissioner, I want you to know that this organization here in Congress makes mistakes also. And sometimes those mistakes are letting us get ahead of a professional conversation that we need to have with a conversation that is uh, perhaps political. And I want to show a, an article that was in Politico that discussed this very directly, where it was assumed that this could be fundraising fodder, a reason to get rid of Dan Snyder in this town by members of this organization. As a matter of fact, not just members of this organization, but Chairman of the House Oversight Subcommittee. And Mr. Commissioner, I want you to know that I think we'd like to invite you back next year. I think you have a story to tell that is one of significance and one of taking many, many people, <clears throat> diverse backgrounds, people who are, sure, in the entertainment industry, but people who also stand up as heroes to many of our children. And I think that you've done a great job in taking uh, these, these men who, uh, by all accounts, may, may not have had the, the, the greatest of, of, of life, perhaps they've turned themselves into something better. I could think about Don Perkins. I could think about lots of people with the Dallas Cowboys that I've watched, Calvin Hill. A number of people that have used their position in society as a result of their athletic ability. Their credentialing has helped them in life. Bill Glass, a personal friend of, of my family's, uh, became a 
Christian minister and helped those who were in prison as a result of his direct uh, observations from working in the NFL about diverse people. So I think that there's a great story to tell, and none of us are perfect. The, the, the gentleman's but time we has do expired. Represent the gentleman's time has ideas, expired. And I hope that you'll accept our. The gentleman's to come time back. has expired. I yield back my time and thank the gentleman. The gentlelady from California, Jackie Spear, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I apologize for also having the National Defense Authorization Act, Act up in uh, armed services. Uh, Commissioner, you announced a conclusion of a 10-month internal investigation, and despite hundreds of interviews, uh, you insisted that there was no written report. And yet documents obtained by the committee reveal that the NFL agreed to a written report when it took control of the investigation. I'd like us to put that up on the screen. In the very first paragraph, it says, and I quote, as part of the investigation, Wilkinson Walsh will complete a written report of its findings. Is this the agreement you signed, yes or no? I have never seen the agreement before, uh, Congressperson, but I know that uh, we signed an engagement letter that was essentially the same uh, engagement letter that was in, signed All right. by the so Washington commanders. So you made the decision to receive an oral rather than a written report, is that correct? We did in October of uh, that year uh, on the basis of okay. providing confidentiality to the people who came forward. It was important. Well, that's to bogus the because those, those uh, re reclaiming my time, the survivors have begged you to release that report. Um, it is the commanders, it's Dan Snyder that had PIs hired to intimidate them and show up at their doorsteps. So the question is, um, did you ever, were you ever, ever a written report or were you ever aware of a PowerPoint presentation? Yes or no? I am not aware of that. And I want to clarify something you said in, in respect to um, people coming forward. People coming forward, um, their confidentiality was important to them. Some have come forward and not been concerned about their privacy or confidentiality. But there are many others, the vast majority of the people that were spoken to in the context of this investigation uh, have wanted to continue their privacy and their confidentiality. Were you free, Beth, we were Wilkin were you free Beth Wilkinson, to be able to speak freely about the findings from her internal investigation with this committee? As, as we've said many times before in the context of this, um, the, the details in the investigation of Beth Wilkinson are privileged. We're going to protect the, we're the asking you, confidentiality and privacy. We're asking you whether or forward. not. Okay, let let me ask you this then. For those victims that would like to have uh, the report released as it relates to them, will you release that? We couldn't do that and protect the uh, confidentiality. That's a that's a issue of. That's privilege. not true. You, you could know, if, no, if, well, not if not if not if the victims are willing to have that information about themselves released. I, I'm, I'm not an attorney, but we can't waive privilege for some that would impact others, I don't believe. So. Well, but but we, I'm happy to have our, our attorneys be able to address that with you. I'm not an attorney. So the Carolina Panthers, um, there was an investigation of them two years before the commander's investigation. They included several recommendations for the league to strengthen its protection of workers. One was a specific prohibition to non-disclosure agreements to limit reporting of potential violations. Um, did the league ever adopt that recommendation? Uh, Mary Jo White made four recommendations. I think that's what you're referring to. We, we uh, implemented three of the four. The one we didn't that we were concerned with was that all workplace uh, functions, uh, excuse me, violations or allegations had to be reported to our office. We don't think we were situated to be able to handle all that, but obviously um, that's something that the individual clubs are going to have to be able to address their own workplace. Would you- If there's a would, would violation you, of, of, of law or personal conduct policy that will be reported- All right, reclaiming my time, reclaiming my time. Would you put in place a prohibition that non-disclosure agreements cannot be used by the various organizations under the NFL? 
Well, I think this is similar to what the uh, chairwoman mentioned in your legislation. And we've said that um, we are operating on the basis that non-disclosure agreements cannot prevent a witness from coming forward and sharing the information with us. We understand the legislation. I'm just asking is, what you uh, would do professionally just, yourself. Right now, we're, we do not let our employees, um, excuse me, our employees to use a non-disclosure agreement to not to cooperate with a league investigation. So non-disclosure agreements by each of your uh, various teams are not being used. Is that what you're saying? Uh, no, I'm not saying the that. Gentle no, is it, ladies, the, the gentle lady's time has expired. The gentleman may answer her question. I'm not saying that uh, state by state. Uh, our teams operate in different states. They have different laws. Uh, so the federal legislation is something that we're willing to uh, work with the committee on. Thank you. The gentleman's You're time back. has expired. And before we close, I want to offer the ranking member an opportunity to offer any closing remarks he may have. Ranking member Comer, you are now recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. And let me thank uh, Commissioner Goodell for testifying here today. Really appreciate that and uh, the conversation. And let me summarize what we heard today from two and a half hours of, of testimony is that uh, there was a toxic work culture at the Washington Redskins football team. Uh, they, the uh, NFL came in, uh, had uh, independent uh, auditors come in. Uh, they identified the problem. Those people were held accountable. They were terminated. And the NFL has uh, ongoing uh, investigations into this and uh, you know, from what we've heard today, the, the problems have been uh, fixed and the, uh, the organization moves on. Uh, we don't believe this was a, a role of Congress. We don't think this was a good use of congressional time. We don't think this was a good use of, con of taxpayer dollars. And Madam Chair, before I close, I want to let Mr. Goodell know that I will be sending two additional questions for the record. And obviously, he can't answer because the committee's over. but. Uh, just wanted to publicly say what those questions will be. Number one, uh, it's been reported that you retained former U.S. Attorney General Loretta Lynch to investigate a former minority shareholder for his involvement in manufacturing false allegations about Mr. Schneider. Is that true? That's the first question. The last question, it has also been reported that after reviewing the Attorney General Lynch's investigation, you permanently banned that minority shareholder from ever owning an NFL team or otherwise participating in business relationships with the NFL. Is that true? And I think the, the answers to those two questions uh, might solve some of the uncertainty that still remains about the Washington football team. With that, Madam Chair, thank you, and I yield back. The gentleman yields back. In closing, I want to thank you, Commissioner Goodell, for appearing before us today. We appreciate uh, very much your testimony and your willingness. Madam to Chair. Uh, Madam Chair, this is Debbie Wasserman Schultz. We, we, are, we, are, we are in closing right now, and I have to get to the floor to vote. So I have to close right now. Uh, we appreciate your testimony. And as we learned today, the committee's investigation has uncovered new evidence of troubling conduct at the Washington Commander's workplace. And as we heard today, the commissioner agreed that this conduct was incredibly serious. In fact, he testified that he has, quote, not seen any workplace in the NFL that is anywhere near what we saw, end quote. I am happy that Commissioner Goodell recognizes that the NFL has one of the most influential platforms in America and that Mr. Snyder's actions were unacceptable. Unfortunately, Mr. Goodell has not agreed to release the findings from the NFL's internal investigation. Without transparency, we cannot have true accountability. That is why I announced my intent to issue a subpoena to Daniel Snyder to appear for a deposition next week. We will not be deterred by billionaire owners or political posturing. The victims demand answers, and we all demand justice. I want to briefly address some questions raised today about the committee's jurisdiction. To be clear, what I was conveying earlier is that the Oversight Committee has broad investigative authority under House Rule 10 
to investigate any matter within Congress's legislative power. As I also explained earlier, this committee has a long bipartisan history of investigating workplace conduct in professional sports, including sexual misconduct. This investigation has already led to two bills that I introduced to help strengthen protection for workers from workplace misconduct. I would invite all of my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to join me in supporting these efforts. The committee will not waver in our efforts to conduct this investigation to ensure that women and all Americans are protected in the workplace. With that, and in closing, I want to thank our panelists again for your remarks, and I want to commend my colleagues for participating in this important conversation. With that, without objection, all members will have five legislative days within which to submit extraneous materials and to submit additional written questions for the witnesses to the chair, which will be forwarded to the witnesses for response. I ask our witness to please respond as promptly as possible. Again, thank you for your attendance today. This hearing is adjourned, and I hope I can make the vote. <laughs>